the DMP Report Podcast, Season 3, Episode 5. On this episode, we discuss the Walt Disney Studios expansion projects, the recently ended Halloween season, and the soon-to-begin Christmas season. Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new episode of the DLP Report Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 5. I have checked this time and we are back after a little bit of a break. Uh, I mean, the last episode was in August and I'm not going to say not that much has happened because we're going to talk about everything that's happened since then. But, you know, it wasn't the most eventful time. The eventful time is coming now. Anyways, I am here with my uh, usual co-conspirators, uh, Jeff from DLP Town Square. And he's on mute. Hello. <laughs> I was pressing the unmute button and it just nothing happened. <laughs> Great. It's like we're back in pandemic times. And Patrick from our very own DLP report team. Hi, everyone. And Arvid is here from Travel to the Magic. Hi, guys. All right. So talking about things that have happened since the last time we talked, because clearly this podcast is just a conversation with us and our listeners. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we went to uh, D23 Expo, um, and we're not going to uh, talk about everything because um, Arvid and Patrick have to go to bed uh, in, in decent time. No, <laughs> Blame it on us. Blame it on us. And also, and also, just for the record, I was not at D23, so I'm going to listen to you talk about D23. <laughs> no, but to be fair, we're going to try to have a reasonably timed episode today. And, and Patrick and Arvid are in a different time zone as they are in uh, mainland Europe. Um, so uh, D23 for Disneyland Paris, I think the main thing that we'll remember is that one concept art of the Avenue, <laughs> which which told us um, everything and nothing at the same time. Um, that was a couple we, of other stuff as well. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, let's let's start with that one. I think that uh, the main thing is that it's confirmed that we're having a tangled attraction on this avenue. Um, if you really zoomed onto it, so people call it people call it a uh, teacups, but I mean, I think it is a teacup ride system, but they're not going to be cups; they're going to be boats. And is it not going to be more like um, the alien flying saucers? I- and no, because they're fun. They're really good. No, I don't think so. I think it's made by the same manufacturer as the teacups, and it has the same design. So it is three turntables on top of one big turntables. I don't know. I haven't been on teacups for a while. Um, and instead of teacups, there'll be boats. So I don't know. Are the boats going to be swinging around that fast? No, probably not. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, uh, I think it's I think it's cool though. But I think the, the really funny thing is that like, oh, well, we're making a big effort to like adapt things to Paris and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, it's outside. It's going to be freezing. Like, like I mean, it's, it's covered. Yeah. yeah, but like, it's not It's not going to be like completely adapted to Paris because it's, if it was adapted to Paris, it would be indoors. Um, it would be fun though if they uh, put windows on it. They could. I mean, I don't I think, think it's it would be nice. Um, and I mean, the, you know, the issue, the issue with Walls in Studios is not really something that we talk about because we're all grown men, but, uh, there are not many rides for the little ones. Even if you look in Toy Story Playland, which is kind of like the little one's land, I mean, they can go on Slinky. On, um, what is it? The RC Racer. RC, yeah. A lot of them cannot go on Parachute Drop. Um, even Slinky can be really scary for the little ones. I'm not going to lie. I've done it once. And I was like, oh, this is like more, <laughs> this is more thrills. It's than fun when you're on your own and you're sliding around. Yeah. Especially <laughs> if you had a few drinks at the Rendezvous Gourmand next door. Um, and you know, so I guess, I guess it is flat rice for the little ones. Um, it'll be nice. And it also bring some kinetic, kinetic energy to this Avenue. Um, Toy Story plan I'm talking about is going to be connected to the Avenue as well with a new entrance, which is actually the same. I don't know, Arvid, you kind of the Disney world expert around here. Is it the same as Disney world? The statues, right? It is it Woody looks and like Jesse. The same statue. Yeah, yeah, with like Jesse having her little pose. But I think then again, it's the same pose they have in California Adventure, where she's pulling like the little rope in front of the carousel. I think she always has the same pose anyway. That's just Jesse. So yeah, yeah it's gonna be just yes, one job. She has one pulling job pulling that rope for <laughs> <laughs> <Poor> Jesse. 
<laughs> right. The statue was buy one, get one free. It was on uh, offer. <laughs> I mean, it's not the first time. Like, so how many statues do we have cloned at each of the parks? You know, the legend statue. Isn't is the legend statue a clone as well? No. No, isn't there another one? I think it's the only one with the legend statue. It's the one uh, Miki with the the. the Oh no, that's the partner statue. Yeah, that's everywhere. Yeah. Oh, the legend one is out in Fantasia Gardens. I think that's unique. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Um, the the interesting thing is going to be to see if so this new entrance is going to basically mean that the dreadful back like paved back alley, you know, behind the animation toilets um <laughs> are gonna be is gonna go away because wait because i mean that, that was that was literally what 10 minutes before we started talking about toilets again oh yeah that's true <laughs> let me tell you those toilets they flood all the time <laughs> it's just it, but Every it, time, seriously I, though it, it no I'm, I'm moving you away from toilets it is the most no. depressing avenue i think in any disney park it is it is horrible yeah. down there. it is literally it is worse than the walk from the parking <laughs> which at least has some kind of theme tents <laughs> or something it is literally a backstage road um well i thought i thought the way it looked uh this is just me maybe just being like a basic guest but i thought the way it, they showed it the way it, like there's a little theater off to the left and it was like the, I felt like um, like um, the way they were selling that at the start was like oh it's gonna be like a Parisian like park I'm like boring like it's just gonna be trees and like getting you down to the lake but like there is like like that little like theater area thing and then the Mary Poppins garden and then like the like tangled garden or whatever and, like um, and I know it's still bare minimum but like it's still more than I thought they were going to do like at the start they were like oh it's just gonna be like a trees garden like type thing and I was like trees. And like you know, there is going to be like some little things. It oh, looked, yes, no. it looked, it looked fuller than I thought it would be. Oh yeah, in the avenue, the, thinking that it's roads... longer than it is, but it's not very long. Mm. Like all, the, all the all the concept art makes it look like a super long pavement. It's yeah. not. It's it's not going to be that far to the lake. But Patrick, the alley that we're talking about is the existing one that's behind the toilet. I'm going back to the toilets. The to- behind oh, the yeah, toilets yeah, 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 animation. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you go from like Hollywood <laughs> Boulevard, which is terrible, to. But like, uh, what could they? What could they ever do there? I just feel like that's just dead space. It's just like a dead alley that they can't really do on Rose. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like if there's a new entrance that's going to clearly going to be lower down the road, on the other side of Parachute Drop, basically connecting where the Domino Wall is to the avenue, then this back alley should go right. Otherwise, how many entrances do you have on this alley? Like every ten meters. But, but where? But where will they put the Walt Disney Studios merchandise van? <laughs> <laughs> which used to yes. be which became the stitch van which became the it was originally i think the uh a rock and roller coaster uh merchandise truck yeah I think um, so, right yeah. and then yeah and then it became uh, it, it's been everything it's been everything i'm pretty sure next time they'll just use it for like pre-parades um and <laughs> Why not? So, yeah, so new entrance for Toy Story Playland. And like you said, Patrick, uh, the little carousel with Mary Poppins in the English garden side of things. So it seems to be like the idea will be to have basically fairy tale gardens. And some of them will be themed to like some of the Disney princesses. Some of them will be themed to obviously Toy Story with the entrance. Then you'll have Rapunzel area. And then on the other side, apparently you'll have Mary Poppins with a little outdoor theater so where like they could it's have really like... interesting right because i'm quickly looking at the concept art because i was i kind of forgot because it's been what three months now um it more looks like a band Three. playing under a gazebo which is actually more towards tiana which is kind of mm-hmm. weird and then on oh, the it gauge, is definitely having... Puppets, though. no okay but it's like if you look at the actual concept art the way that people mm-hmm. are drawn like the outfits they have on looks more like tiana and then on top of one of the gates you actually have peter pan sitting there I mean, if it's the same concept art artist that made Pim Kitchen with a an adult body <laughs> and a, and a kid's head, uh, yeah. Well, Arby, do you been to Hong Kong Disneyland? And I think in Hong Kong, don't they have like fairy tale princess garden or whatever? It's basically it was basically the what like a water ride should have been, but it's basically a walk through maze type thing. Or well, yeah, so you have the well, you have two things. Right? I'm quite quickly thinking back to what the name was, but on the Right behind the castle, you just have a little walking path where they have little gazebos where you can meet characters, quite often also mm-hmm. princesses. And on the left, you have more like a maze what we have in Paris, but then it's a lot lower and they have little 
scenes of all the princess movies. Like I think I think even like you know like I like I, like that second one. I feel like that's the kind of vibe they're going for. It's sort of like putting little pops and things there that you can just like maybe stroll around and just walk around and see and not particularly have to like wait and just be like oh that's cute. Like which you know what like for the studios is like you know for Hong Kong Disneyland I don't know how, how that works because I've ever been but like for well, studios that's pretty like you know we we all we all know that there's a bit of magic missing from the studios so I feel like that's like a nice angle that they took. Yeah. But and also Patrick is, oh, sorry. what I still see in a concept art right and and I know they've updated it quite a lot as well but you still have the what the alien swirl saucers whatever they call them. They're still on there as well though. No. No, I think that's the tangle. No. You're looking at no, no. No, you're looking at the wrong concept art. This is the concept art that was hanging up at D23 Expo. Yeah, but that's not the one that they showed during the conference. This is the one that they showed during the conference. I took a picture of it. No, with the, with the new... They, they don't have... That's the other one that they released before. Well, that's even, that's even poor, now, just, that. I mean, so like, I, I even show an old concept art if you're going to update it like two minutes later on one of the stages, which I missed, but... That's yeah, on the on the um, at the at the at the expo at the, um, the parks panel they have like a different one, um, which doesn't have alien flying saucer because I mean clearly it hasn't quite done very well, um, in the US. Um, and so going beyond the avenue, and now we're a little bit further than D twenty three. We've also seen um photos of construction that we've posted, uh, yeah, and it's definitely, the, it's definitely yeah, it doesn't have the ass. Sorry, it doesn't have ass. No, 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 not the not the one at the on the stage. Yeah. Um, uh, the construction of the lake is moving on, kind of fast. I don't know. I don't want to be too optimistic. Uh, it seems like the bottom has been like you know laid out, and the shores are there, and the bridge to Frozen Land, which is actually quite interesting. That Paris is getting this cool swivel bridge because. We don't have anything like that in Paris. Um, it'll be interesting when the floats come in and out. I guess they'll have to cut guest flow and um, that be and fun. open open well, the bridge. It, it works with Disney World, in. right? And Epcot, where they yeah, well, yeah they used to cut it. Now that they have the barges, <laughs> yeah, now they do. Anyway, yeah, now the, the tacos are just in there waiting to go to the bin. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, in twenty twenty three, yeah, <laughs> wow. What a write-off. Uh, and uh, anyways, not the topic. And uh, and uh, Frozen Land is also starting to go vertical. When I say vertical, is there was one pillar that was up. But, you know, it's still a good sign. Um, and I guess I, it's, it's definitely not coming 24. So I guess we're still hoping for 25 um, for Frozen Lake, uh, Frozen Lake, Frozen Land, the lake, and, and the avenue, which, I mean, it hasn't been uh, said if they were going to open everything at once. I personally think it doesn't make sense to really open it before people are saying, oh, you should open the restaurant, but the restaurant really overlooks the lake. So if you don't have a view of a show or even water, if it's going to be like bulldozers going in front of there, I don't see how they could open it, but maybe. And um, also for like cost measures, I suppose they can save on the fact that they don't have to open one area and not put it, you know all that kind of things as well like sort yeah, of I mean, you know. to open all at once that would be one like thing that. from disney they don't like opening massive areas all at once they like doing like the, the little bits and pieces like even if something's not ready you know they'll they'll still open that land like um a good example <laughs> is pixar pier right they Inside Out wasn't ready, but hey, we're going to open it anyway. I think I mean, the carousel Galaxy, wasn't as well, right? But even Galaxy's Edge wasn't ready, right? And they opened it. <laughs> well, no. a bigger example. So. Oh, wow. We're going so controversial. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I, but I don't, I don't necessarily think that just because uh, just because the frozen area is not ready, I don't think that would be a reason to not open right. the land, especially with the Olympics coming. Well, like, I, I think if if the carousel's ready in 2024, just take the capacity and open it. Yeah, but the, but like, um, yeah, I don't know. I I'm I'm curious. I don't I like I because I read online like contradictory reports about when like uh, like I I know the, I think the last time I was reading it was before uh, COVID hit, and they're like, oh, Tokyo 2020, it's gonna like 
like Tokyo Disney is going to be slammed or whatever. But I don't know how many, like, I'd, I'd be curious to know how many, like, people who travel for the Olympics are like, oh, let's go to a Disney park. Because I feel like maybe if you're that into the Olympics to travel for the Olympics, maybe the Olympics is kind of like your Disneyland. And you're like, oh, yeah, but I'm, I mean, in Tokyo, though, they, they still have restrictions on the number of people they let into the park. So, I mean, that also plays a role into it, right? Well, we were banned. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, and I suppose doesn't Paris put a limit on how many people get into the park? Oh, controversial. Sorry. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's I, still more than what Tokyo is doing, though. I mean, Tokyo at times is apparently completely dead, and they just have hardly anybody in. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I, I think like, it, you might. It's probably not going to be the reason you go, but I think for a lot of people, they might just go. Do you know what? I'm here anyway. I'll take a day. Yeah, I'm just curious as to how many people, it, like, because I know, like, Aaron, like, thing is like, and you know, Disneyland Paris is Europe's biggest tourist attraction. So obviously, people want to go, but like, it's, I don't know, I'm just curious as to, like, if you're, because I'm obviously not into sports, like, I'm wondering how big people are like, oh my God, I got tickets to go and see, like, something like, oh, skateboarding and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound interesting to me. I'd rather just go to Disneyland Paris. <laughs> But like, but like, you know, I'm just curious because like that's like different people how they see things and will they go or will it just be because like I don't know, I don't know. I'm, I'm but like, to your point, I don't think that Disney should open something new because a lot of people are going to be in Paris. If tons of people are going to be in Paris and they're going to go to Disneyland Paris anyway, why waste the marketing on that year? Well, I mean, you know, open you it a year later, so. <laughs> Open it a year later. I mean, Frozen. Open it a year yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do Frozen, sure. Yeah, but you open would, it you in twenty five. But I, yeah, maybe. But I mean, that's not going to make any impact on anything. It's like a little thing. Um, it's so, just extra space, right? You got a bit of extra space. You got yeah. a few extra hundred or thousand people passing through. Yeah, and I mean, hope, in like, um, it's it's significant still. Things have changed a lot, I think, since Walt Disney Studios was open. Everyone is all about that selfie and that Instagram and that cute pose. And I think those gardens are going to do really well in that regard. Like, well, a, a lot of people will be spending a lot of time in there getting that perfect photo with their Disney bounds and their snack and their this and their that. And, you know, and I think it's um, it's like easy and cheap and cute. And also like you can't fit an attraction in that space anyway. So you might as well try to make it into like, you know, here in London, people pay to go to like selfie spots, places where you just like pay 20 quid to just go in like various rooms and backdrops just to take photos, you know? Look at, look at, look at the new gates, uh, 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 Toy Story Playland slash Cars Land or Cars road trip or whatever like that like that those two little gates every time i walk by there was like people taking pictures of that so like that's the thing that like in disney like at disney like u.s disney parks are like have like disney walls and stuff like that and i feel like that yeah like that's the thing that like if you find if you build like a cute spot that you can have a nice photo people will find value in taking the photo there so like it's nice if they can make these little gardens into like a little area where you can be like oh, i can have a nice photo here because people will do it and like that's taken up, like it's a, like a thing they'll have done on their day and blah blah blah. Like it's all about giving like guest experience and stuff. And you mean you mean you're not taking photos in front of the wonderful Hollywood Boulevard cardboard backdrops? Oh, uh, I, I do. do. I do. <laughs> I hope we have a video of the moment when they just like tumble them down. You know, like probably not. But um, value was lost. <laughs> mm, uh. Other things announced at D23 for Paris. We're going to go real quick over these uh, because there's actually not that much info. Uh, the Toy Story show. Oh, yeah. It's Pixar, no? Not just Toy Story. Uh, sorry, the Pixar show. Yes. Uh, why am I saying Toy Story? Sorry. Um, which will have apparently Monsters, Inc. because that's the only concept that we have. Very little <laughs> is known about that show. So I don't know. I don't know how much is done. I don't that know was a much... whole weird section of that as well. When I, It was like one of the first announcements, right? He was like, and there's going to be a Pixar show going to Paris. Anywhere more on that stuff later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... Could be cool. I am glad to see that it looks like it's going to be sort of a good capital investment, something to stay and something right, that's going that to use to something. studios, theaters, tech. And, and, you know, they made all this investment for Marvel, which was kind of a flop. 
um, the Marvel show, and now oh. all this stuff like just sits there. What the Marvel show is a flop? Come no, on. I I thought like Marvel Avengers. I'm like, wait, Avengers Campus is a no, flop? not Avengers Campus. <laughs> Campus is okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. And yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's a weird one, right? Because I feel like Avengers Campus will really come into itself when the lake opens and you can actually mm. connect to the other side and it's not so much of a dead end and you can just like have a nice troll and I like, get out on the other side and you know I know have be more part of something bigger I know obviously that that's going to take time but anyways we digress uh yeah. because that, show that, we don't know the much moment that it. theater is just the most expensive meet and greet location I think Disney have ever yeah. built yeah exactly <laughs> exactly but watch out for the Christmas season this is going to be the place to be um Yep, yeah, that was uh yeah okay uh, and so yeah Pixar show and uh, it's it's apparently not going to be just that uh, I know there was plans for a like Pixar festival Pixar season we had like a very short one I don't know if you remember a few years ago what was it called Pixar days Pixar Pixar like, I, um, Toy Story Play, play days. days yeah Play Days. Play days, yeah, but that was only Toy Story. But then there was, uh, remember, we had those Pixar banners, and like, I don't know, they kind yeah. of like dabbled in the Pixar thing. But I mean, it would be I, nice. I always tend to miss those things because they announce it like a week before and they put up the banners, and it's like, oh, we have a party next week. Toy like, Story Play Days was so fun. Like, there yeah. was like the army man going through, and there was like characters, and there was like little special treats. Oh, that was that was like, I was like, oh, if they could just do this with Toy Story Play Land all the time, it would be so fun. Well, well, I mean, in, California, they sell, in California, they still have a parade lying around for Toy Story, the play parade. Oh, uh, Pixar play parade. Oh, yeah. yeah. Play parade is fun. Over. Yeah. All they use I see it Jeff for looking at the camera years. like, no, not happening. No, I like I, I it. Yeah, but you can have the play parade around the lake. Like, the lake is going to need its own parade, which it's probably not going to get anything. But, um, <laughs> but we're getting a lake show, so... That's exciting. With whatever barges they bought from wherever, who knows? But Can things you are they're going to bring them over on a Disney cruise. Things like are in movement. In things are being studied, and the screens are being bought. <laughs> um, so, what else has been announced for Paris? Uh, we we thought we were going to get a big Frozen news, and we have gotten a huge Frozen news. It's the Frozen suite at the DLH. Yeah. Anyways, um, Disneyland Hotel also was announced that um, it was going to open in 2024, which, you know, uh, is it going to beat the Hotel New York for the longest hotel refurbishment? Yeah, because it technically closed in 2020, right? Yeah. <laughs> God. I, I, I don't know, like memories, memories inside that place are so distant. I feel like it was a different lifetime. Um, remember but, just one day you'll be able to walk in and have a hot chocolate again yeah that's five and times also, more expensive as Cheyenne yeah. I'm sorry <laughs> to bring it back to this once more but oh. they have fantastic toilets and you oh, know the luxury, better, luxury toilets <laughs> they are better than the park toilets and I, I'd miss them <laughs> that's true they're like they're not like stalls people. they have real you walls close the door. you were in a room and it was exactly but then but You're then like, the wi-fi well, was shitty in there though so i mean even if you would want to go in there it was hit or miss on the wi-fi when you close yourself in yeah it, it dead just download download your face it doesn't close and just have watch it on download all the time <laughs> yeah i mean I miss the Disneyland Hotel for all those little things, you know, like in the winter after park closed, you could go to Cafe Fantasia and buy a super expensive cocktail, a bottle of wine. And it was fine because you were getting the piano, the ambiance, and it was warm. And you could just like, it felt like luxurious. You could have a nice cocktail and then, you know, go wherever you need to go after. Uh, and now, like, I mean, yes, you can go to Skyland Bar and all that, which is actually really nice. And all the all the venues at Hotel New York is nice as well, but it doesn't really feel like you just right outside the park, obviously. Yeah, it's also, yeah, it's a long walk. Skyline, Skyline Bar located on the ground floor. You're like, what's that? <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Was there no Was there no real estate upstairs at Hotel New York to do that? It is quite hilarious, like when you're in the lobby and there's just a skyline bar door just there. Yeah, <laughs> I just think it would be re- like if they really wanted. I know, like it's great and I like it and I've been there and it's fab and I love the whole like screens and whatever. But I think it would have been cool if they just had a like stuck it upstairs on the top on the top floor somewhere, and you'd be like, oh my god, like but like, you know, 
you know what they, you know what they could have done they could have done like um they did they do for uh, a lot of attraction actually uh like uh, the star wars hotel or that earth whatever restaurant is make elevator. a fake elevator and every time you go into the bar you go through there and it's like it vibrates and there's a little animation and then you feel like you're going upstairs and then the door opens and you don't see the lobby outside. You just go right in and you're like, on, on the, on the Disney dream, they have a skyline bar actually called the skyline bar as well. And they're like, they make, I don't really like it that much, but at least when you're in the bar, there's the no doors way are like, the doors are, yeah. you can't see out of them. They're, they're completely, hmm. like, you know, yeah. You yeah. wouldn't know that you're. They don't. In a hotel they lobby. don't have a terrace. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. A Skyland bar is nice, and also the Disney Island Hotel refurb looks really legit. So, like, if we have to wait yeah. a while for it, that's pretty. Like, you know, paying like seven hundred fifty euros might stay in nineteen ninety two Peter Pan chic was probably not it. So, With like, one plug was, on the wall. <laughs> yeah, like that probably wasn't it. So, like, um, like even though, but, but like all these like suites that they're releasing. They look really nice, and it would be like entice me to be like, oh, you know what? It's a once in a while thing. Why not? Like, because it looks actually like proper, proper like 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 nice, but not like too in your face, and something that hopefully will age better than uh, Sequoia Lodge. I mean, everything can age better than Sequoia Lodge. From <laughs> you know, I I like that they have learned their lesson <laughs> because you know Sequoia Lodge is the perfect example of like not going far enough they never really closed it for that long they changed uh, wallpaper they changed uh, a couple furniture and the carpeting and repainted and they were like oh there you go refurb well like is that what they did to New York um, I personally don't think that Newport was far enough personally I think yeah. the rooms are still already looking very dated and they could have used a complete remodel and a complete different design like um like the book club and disney world for example uh, i know not everyone likes those rooms but i mean it's it is a very fine line right between how many disney touches you put in and how modern do you make it obviously has to be on today's standard and luxurious enough to justify the price but you also want it to be disney like it is a fine line. I think people are saying that the Riviera missed the mark, for example, but Olani did it really well. So I don't know. It's just you have this like very close line, I think. So let's see. Let's see how the Disneyland Hotel comes out. Um, hopefully good. Um, also announced at uh, D23, and that'll be the last thing, is that <laughs> Disneyland Paris 30th anniversary is extended till September 30. Shock and surprise. <laughs> Wow. That means we've got our start date for Halloween 2023. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe uh, you still have a lot of Run Disney people enjoy the last two weeks of the 30th. Are we having Run Disney? No, I don't know. Like, I'm just hoping Run Disney is going to take place again and it might be in those last mm. two weeks. So Yeah, I don't know. There is absolutely no chatter about that. And I so have to bring yeah. it back. I mean, even, even Hong Kong is announcing it again. Hong Kong is going to get back in 2023. Disneyland's got it back and they ditched it years ago. Yeah. I think the issue is that Run Disney in Paris is like half America. of the people are Americans. And so the question is, are Americans coming to Europe? But now that our currencies are worth nothing, maybe they will, they will be willing to come <laughs> run in Paris <laughs> in large numbers. So Disney, it's cheap to come to Paris for them. So have Run Disney so they can do that. That's uh, not that's not the marketing Disney do. Hey, it's yeah. cheap to come. Please do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your dollar is worth no, a no, lot no. here. No, no, no. It's cheap to get here, but once you're here, don't worry. We'll make it expensive enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So that was, 90 euros for the Premier Access. This that week, was yeah. the announcement for D23. <laughs> and, you know, D20, D23 was really fun. Uh, Jeff and Arvin and myself were there. Um, it's always a good time. And you're just uh, crazy exhausted and uh but you know lots of uh lots of fun lots of memories uh so yeah if you're yeah, it's, if you're, it's a mental weekend but it, it's just it's so much fun as well yeah there's definitely this feeling on the last day on the, on the sunday you're like what the fuck just happened <laughs> like <laughs> you also you also sort of walk out you're like oh i survived another one <laughs> yeah exactly. but then you're also looking okay what, what is going to be the next one let's say shall we just sign up already book a hotel or something so, yeah. yeah yeah when i went for the first time i was like well that was fun but you know i don't know if i'll do it again and then uh, sure enough uh, i was i was at the next one 
because but the thing it, is as well like it, it is an expo but you spend so much more money and all the merch and all the other crap you can find there. maybe not you ben i know but i try to control myself a lot of other fans including myself we just yeah go all out you you, the, you like walk into mickey's of glendale you're like oh i like this yeah i like that too i like that i like this water bottle that has the Walt Disney Imagineering logo on it. Ooh, yeah, I like that. The bottle. Uh, nice. hmm? I should have gotten the bottle. Damn it. It's really nice. Um, damn it. <laughs> I'm going to steal it from you. Um, yeah, so it was really fun. And uh, yeah, you, you just spent a lot of money. And But it, it's really fun because uh, you, you get to meet a lot of people and uh, see some crazy stuff. <laughs> like some people dress up and, yeah. and uh, all the... And, like, um, like, the thing is, is that you don't realize until you're in the States like how big Disney is. I was just queuing up and like, hey, do you want your picture taken with this Grey's Anatomy wall? And you're like, uh, yeah, I guess, sure. And I got this Grey's Anatomy like staff badge. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> I mean, who knew Grey's Anatomy was still a thing anywhere well, on the so, planet? So just to come back to what Jeff has said, right, on, on how big Disney actually is in the US, I, I felt that the exact same way, right? When I went to Anaheim the very first time, that was, uh, what was it, three quarters of a year after I went to Disney in Paris again for a very long time ago. And then I compared how many people walk around in Disney merch compared Mm. to Anaheim, compared to Paris. But in Anaheim, you're the odd person out if you're not wearing any Disney merch. While in Paris, you still see like it's half half. Like at some days, you might be the only one in Main Street wearing Disney merch. But in in Anaheim, it's just everybody wears that shit. It's insane. And they handed out those little Disney Plus day ears. And like in Paris, most people would just look at them and go, yeah, put them in the bag. In Anaheim, everyone's just like, right. They were on. I was wearing it in the park. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Yeah, they were really cheap. They're like, you know, they're the promotional ones and they're basically like a paper cap and like two tiny, really thin yeah, plastic. People were still selling them on eBay for like 250 or 275. Yeah, yeah so, and I mean, they still look yeah. really cool. Like, you know, that next year for the Disney 100, they're going to probably give them out again with a like a silver. And like it's gonna be just perfect. Like it, they just look good. Oh wow! Should we should we like move to Disney One Hundred? Okay, that was a nice, a nice segue. segue. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, <laughs> since uh, we'll be quick because there's actually not that much to talk about. Uh, Jeff and I were at in London at the D One Hundred event. Um, it was fun. Jeff was drunk, and uh... <laughs> oh, everybody was. Come on. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know, I know. I'm joking. Um, no, it was um, it was a really nice event. It was a very small venue, so it was really packed. But uh, Disneyland Paris sent more characters to that event than I think they've had out for the past 15 years. Um, they had a uh, uh, Mike Wazowski was there, and Edna, and uh, all the Disney princesses, and obviously Mickey and friends, and. And Chewbacca. Woody and Buzz and just like Chewbacca, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, like all the Star Wars characters. They had the, um, uh, you Chef know, the Bale, Wakanda Gucci. fighters. Yeah, that's <laughs> like what the hell, Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was cool. Uh, we haven't really learned that much about D one hundred, to be honest. Um, well, there was a, there was a few little bits in there. So there's, we're gonna celebrate on uh, October sixteenth. Thank you very 16th. much. Yeah. <laughs> I was confusing with November 18th, which is Mickey's birthday coming up. No, so there's there's October 16th, where there's a whole day of stuff. Yeah. Uh, which is going to sell out to... instantly on the reservation yeah. system. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, and then throughout, they haven't really said how long, but they said afterwards there will be other stuff happening yeah. if you can't go on the day. So that's kind of fun. I mean, what, are we going to get... Because um, obviously... The anniversary ends on September 30. So does that mean that it feels Disney like there's gonna be two weeks of not just Halloween? Is Disney Delight gonna become Disney D one hundred? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's face it. Yes. That would make sense. Uh, you could make like a giant one hundred in the sky with the drones and have some cool. kind of so, yeah, sure, go projection ahead. thing about the Wall Street Company. And I'm sure they could get Disney to pay for it, as in as in company. Yeah. Um, and then what else is there? Um, oh, there's a the New Year's Eve moment. Oh, yeah, there's New Year's Eve. Yeah. So something's going to happen in New Year's Eve, which we'll see what it is. My guess, you know, you know, I think if if I was them, and it's a complete guess, I don't know anything, but um, I would produce a pre-show and play it 
on New Year's, maybe without the drones, and then bring it back after the anniversary ends as like a daily pre-show until the end of the year or something with some drones or not. <laughs> Turn the castle platinum. Uh, yeah, well, now we have cool LEDs. You can just make whatever you want with it, apparently. Uh, and then what else? Oh, yeah, there's other stuff. So there's this, there's a few things happening around Europe. There's the Wonder of Friendship thing, which is in London, Berlin, Barcelona, and Paris. Talking about places that you pay to take selfies, this That's is one, one of those places. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, there's the Disney 100 exhibition going to Munich, Munich and London. For no reason whatsoever. <laughs> Yeah, that's an interesting choice to start with Munich, but, you know, they did. Um, yeah, this coming to London in the fall. And then there's the concert, which is touring just, like, everywhere. Yeah, which you are going to, and which I have not bought tickets yet. You need to. It's selling out. It's actually selling really fast. Oh, shit. Okay, fine. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so like, I feel like... they to sell out the O2 pretty fast. Wait, like, is the O2 like, sold out? They've, oh, like, really? they've only got some of the top... Um, oh, God. Right Maybe they're at a second date. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of crazy so, that there's only one. So I actually think one of the reasons why they're still going to Munich is that there's a big Disney office in Munich, though. So they might just go to some corporate locations where they're near to Disney property. You never know. Maybe. They've um they've rented out the Excel in London, which is kind of interesting. I mean, I hear they have like a park in Paris. <laughs> Park of Schicks, right? Or is that a yeah. different? Uh, yeah. And they have a big I, Disney I think, office I, in Paris well, as well. I, think, I don't know. Man. I think it will end up in Paris. I think there's there's yeah, no real it has to I be. think it's probably gonna go off to London. You know it'd be cool if it was the it's gonna be obviously way too late, but if it was the opening show of the new convention center of Disneyland Paris. Or uh, that, or just bring in a night period. <laughs> Rip out all the seats, put it in there. Yeah. Or or at the uh, world famous New York Convention Center, the the hidden tent. Um, yeah, no. I, yeah. I, I mean, we don't even know. Good. We don't even know what what it's going to be and if it's going to be any good. I'm sure it'll be good, but you know. But 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 it's really interesting well, it to me. Be. I mean, I think like Anaheim, they start on January 27th, right, with their celebrations. Yeah, yeah so they're doing it like for the calendar year. Yeah, mm. but also it's Anaheim, which I feel like they have a little bit more. History there with the Walt Disney Company in general. <laughs> well, I think also I think a large part of this is going to be that well, Walt Disney World's got the fiftieth, so nothing's going to happen in Walt Disney World until April. I mean, the Paris 50th, has the thirtieth, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have the fiftieth banners. They have the fiftieth banners and Mickey in an outfit in Town Square Theater. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have the thirtieth, so Anaheim has nothing going on next year. Yeah. So it's, yeah. this is just a cheap way of, of them getting something. And look, it sounds fun. I'm I wish they had an amazing brand new day parade and an amazing night parade that were just sitting backstage, but they don't, do they? No. Well, Anaheim, they, Anaheim, well, yes. they have Magic Happens, <laughs> which ran for a grand total of two weeks. <laughs> they have, yeah. Like Magic Happens oh, has ran like mean, three times. What do, you mean, what do you mean you haven't seen Magic Happens? <laughs> yeah, Patrick has seen Magic Happens. Is one of or the apparently only... one of the 600 people that have seen it. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, D100 refers to the number of people that have seen Magic Happens. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's happening. That's coming back. Um, yeah. So that's... But then on top I, of that, like getting a, a lot of other stuff though, at Anaheim, way. right? Anaheim is also getting a lot of other stuff. They're going to have the new fireworks show. That's new some other fireworks, things. new yeah. world of color. Yeah. So they have as a lot you, of stuff Just like up. a quick, a quick, you know, side note. Have you ever watched... A fireworks show in Anaheim when the entire Central Plaza, which is not very big, is sold out. They put you on this basically ring road around Central Plaza where you where you're not allowed to stop, but you're allowed to walk as many times as you mm. want. And so I've seen the entire Halloween fireworks by doing some kind of slow walk around Central <laughs> Plaza, and then every few times you just go right in front of the castle. It's amazing. <laughs> all of the American parks have a way better way of like doing guest flow around firework times. Paris yeah. is just like you can stand anywhere, and if you want to yeah. go somewhere, uh, good luck. Well, because in Paris they have literally five cast members to manage all the Disney elimination crowd, which yeah, and no one has lights. There's no there's no walkways in and out. There is there's nothing. 
there's nothing. Um, but you know, I mean, it is not the cast members' fault. Don't you know? No, I, no, no, it's not. And they're just they're just very limited. They just don't have enough cast members to organize something like that. Like they, you know, they should have to. They should have ropes before to make all those like. Well, all they all they do in uh, corridors is just tape. They just put. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, maybe it'll come because I feel like Paris is getting more and more. I mean, now you can't sit in front of nighttime shows anymore, um, which is like, I think, a safety thing, which is a, I don't know. I, I I get it. There was a lot of fights. I have seen families that were about to literally get physical um, because someone in front had gotten up. And then everyone starts getting up and it starts a whole crowd movement and people are still sitting down, get like trampled on people walk on their bags and yell. I mean, when the show starts, usually everyone misses the, like half the crowd misses the first five minutes of elimination in that seated area, because there is like panic, you know, when the show starts. But it's it's so interesting. The only thing that the only thing that you're allowed to uh, do uh, like nighttime shows now is if you're on somebody's shoulders and if that's like three seconds before it starts and then like I was about to yeah. and all of those yeah. like let's sit on someone's shoulders I'm like oh my god there's a seven foot man in front of me yeah, yeah. you yeah. could like you could be standing there and you go yeah okay I can see here and then there's like and now Disney Illuminations are like boom 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 yeah, yeah. oh well, that, that's nice now I can't see yeah. anything and if you dare say something they turn around and they're like but it's Disney. It's for kids. They have to see. And like, well, then maybe get here earlier and find a better spot where they can see. You know, I don't know. I, I actually had that, what, two weeks ago on a Friday night that happened exactly to my friend who is like half my size. Everything was fine with a perfect spot. The first like glittering of whatever. And that was it for her. She couldn't see yeah. anymore. And I, I told the guy and a guy got super annoyed with me. He's like, is this, is this OK? Is this OK? Is this OK? I'm like, dude, shut up. Watch the damn show. Like that's what we're yes. here for. Yeah. But, it's- but I also think there's there's like ways to be just be nice to your fellow guests, right? Because I remember I was sat somewhere. Yeah, it was in uh, it was the Oogie Boogie Bash, and like everyone's sitting down, like waiting for the the parade to start. And like somebody stood behind me, and I was like, just so you know, I'm going to be standing up when this starts. Yeah, and like yeah. people just go, oh, okay, well, thanks for telling me. Yeah, but and then I they mean, can either stay or leave, but at least they won't be like yelling at you when you go. <laughs> but then, for instance, if you look at, at Tokyo, right there, it actually works. They have you hold your kid on on like shoulder height. You have to hold the kid that it's on the same height as your eyes. So mm-hmm. you're not blocking somebody behind you with like a seven foot guy. But they also at parades and fireworks actually have seating area. So also for the parades, like the first four rows are seating area. Then they have a rope and then everybody behind the rope can stand. That's good. To me, that is, I mean, why why not? And they have we they have the same chilly weather that we have here and the rain. So it's not like that that could be the issue. But then again, it, Paris it is also where costing issue, right? You just don't have enough people. That, but also, for instance, the the um, how, how how cast members here get really annoyed when you have your feet off the street, which is or on the street instead of like off the sidewalk on the street. When that happens, it's like they get so annoyed with you. Well, in the US. People just have their feet on the street. I'm like, what is what is up with this? Yeah, that's a weird one. I've never understood that one. Yeah. Well, that didn't stop that one kid well, from that TikTok thing, video. You know, and I sat with I sat with my feet on the street, and I was waiting for someone to just come and share it with me to get them off. And even like to, I, I, again, I'm not having a go at any cast member specific, but I've had my like because like you know I I have like big shoes, so like I would sit and I would have my like, and even if like the smallest bit of my toe was going over there like, blah, blah, blah. I'm like oh my god like I'm like uh, I'm as off the street as I can be um where and then I watched it in America and sensational in Disneyland and I was like oh my god nobody's shouting at me to get my feet off the street it was actually kind of I felt like it was really bold I was like my feet around the street people are doing a parade in front of me <laughs> uh, it's like it was felt really bold you know what actually happened to us with uh, with sensational we were there 2019 or something was still on um my mother-in-law was sitting on the sidewalk she's not really she, she always has difficulties walking cast members came up and said hey shall we just move one of the benches closer to the to the side of the sidewalk you can go sit on the bench they did that and we literally had our knees and feet hanging over the sidewalk onto the street no issues and we just sat on the on the bench the whole damn show and i was like this is perfect having that said let's go back to the toilets yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. Could no. some illuminations. Uh, oh no, that's coming up later on the show. No, oh, well, we can oh, all we can all celebrate because uh, today is Tuesday, uh, Monday. <laughs> Sorry, I wish. thinking. 
<laughs> uh, Monday, uh, November 7. And that means that on Friday is the last performance of Disney Illumination for two whole months. Can't wait. Yes. We have Disney Cannot dreams wait. of Christmas. We'll talk about Christmas in a moment. But first, let's talk about the season that just ended, Halloween. <laughs> What do you guys think? It was, I think, I think this season of Halloween, I would call it like back to normal Halloween. You know, like last year we had only some random cavalcades. I mean, they did their best with what they could we're wearing masks. It was just not the same. And this year we're back to basically full on 2019. It was great to see the new parade. It had new, it had new fireworks effects and smoke effects. Um, it's great to hear that music again, to see all the costumes, uh, and to see you know the villains. Uh, Maleficent lost her brambles her in, in Castle yeah. Courtyard, which was just the weirdest thing. Uh, <laughs> apparently, they are what? broken, and the company that has made them has gone bankrupt, and also <laughs> they've just resurfaced Castle Courtyard. So I don't know. I think it's a combination of everything. They were just kind of like, oh, we're just not going to do it this year. Um, Unclear if they'll ever return. They were really cool, but it I did mean, look like a downgrade. Like, yeah. Just... Oh god, it was bad. I mean, I, I, I wish they had at least sort of like built something in like fake stone, you know, like fake stone mm. arches or something. But like, what they chose, they clearly went to B and Q, um, and picked up some, you know, garden stuff. Um, but also, there's plenty of other places that you could have put her that would have been in theme. And they just didn't. Yeah. It was a very interesting location. And that location is not particularly pretty. Like most photos that you get there have like either just grass behind you or the side wall of um, Albon Chante. And, and the queue there, there's not particularly a lot of room for it. So I don't, yeah, it was a really interesting choice. Um, but for me, what they could have just done, they should have just put her in Meet Mickey Pavilion, right? And just brought some of the screens or some of the technology they have from studios, bring that over and just make a whole thing of that for her. That could have worked. Yeah. I mean, talk about Meet Mickey. I, I had hopes that because during the pandemic, all the characters that were, remember those days yeah. of the characters just being being like on stage taking selfies, um, I had hopes that Mickey was going to be in his Halloween costume at Meet Mickey and then in his Christmas costume, but it doesn't seem to be something that they're going to do. So that's yeah, too bad. Because that's just such an easy win. It is. And you know, and I get it. They don't want to wear the hats. The hats are too heavy. Don't wear the hat. Fine. But you can still have a nice Halloween costume and a nice Christmas costume without a hat. So, um, yeah. And you can make a, you can make a pretty basic Halloween costume for Mickey. They have some of the designs are pretty simple, and they're just like you know a top and a bottom. Look at, um, look at this year's Disneyland costume for Mickey at Christmas. All they've done is they've just put a Christmas jumper on him. Yeah, and like everyone's gonna eat it up. I feel I mean, like that's such I a do cute love thing. it. I feel like that's such a cute thing that he's just wearing a little Christmas jumper because I feel like I think in Hong Kong or Shanghai he wears a little Christmas jumper as well, and I'm like that's so cute because that's what we all kind of wear at Christmas. So like in little cute jumpers, and he's in a cute jumper. I'm like, oh, I love it. He's like a little, he's getting ready for Christmas. And I just think it's really wholesome. Especially if you make the jumper available to buy. So you can match Mickey's Christmas <laughs> oh jumper. Oh my God. That would just be <laughs> like a win. Which but then exactly talking about selfies doing, though. Oh. <laughs> but, but talking about selfies, villains then. Can anybody explain to me what the actual meaning was of that weird ass castle, <laughs> royal stage, villains takeover? It's about. called it's called a meet and play. And so they have an entrance and then they come down and they just interact with guests. I'll I'll admit for the days and the times that I've been going to it, which usually is some of the first ones in the morning around 10 or 11 a.m. And on weekdays, I realize that this is not everyone, but I have had some great luck, like just you know, waiting around a villain, waiting for them to finish talking to people. And then they just came to me. We had a whole discussion, took a selfie, went to the next one, same, same, same. And I mean, I didn't have a bad experience there. If you're, if you're looking for like, you know, a proper IQ, it's my turn. I get in, you're going to be disappointed. This is not 
this is not how they do that. Um, Patrick, should I read your comments? Um, <laughs> Patrick says, meet and play sounds like a slogan for a hookup app. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the Disney uh, it's dating not, app. Meet and I mean, play I'm, is the Netflix I mean, and chill of the time, Disney box. Every, every, time, every time I heard meet and play, I was like, that sounds a bit wrong. <laughs> it sounds a bit like, ooh. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I think Patrick fell off the sofa. There you go. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Did what did you think, Ari? Did you do you not like that kind of system? Well, the, to, to me, so we, we went on day one, and it was just we had to quickly run in, look at it. But it it, it was kind of lost on me. And then when we went back the Friday before the first Halloween party, which whatever date that was, I don't know what it was. It's just the if you're not the front line exactly at the rope you're not going to really be able to meet or take a selfie or whatever with one of the villains. Um, and then also what they do on the stage is, yeah, Gaston's just showing off his guns. That's it. And I'm like, okay. So you've been, you've been after they changed the system. When I went, there was no ropes. And the villains were just in front of Castle Stage walking around. Okay. Um, and so each villain had some kind of like a vaguely distant crowd around them. And then an, an attendant that was kind of like, you know, but they've changed it. I think the week of Halloween or the week before Halloween, when the crowds get bigger to have some ropes and try to like avoid people just, you know, harassing the villains, I guess, or just like crowding too much. I, I um, thought the ropes were also there on October 1st, though, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to try to look back on my pictures, but maybe I'm wrong. There were some, there are some ropes, but the villains were like on the, you know, discovery land side of the rope too. So okay. I explain, I don't know. Uh, at least that's where I met, you know, Dr. Facilier and Gaston and Krilla and, and all that. But I, I don't know. I guess it depends on the crowds. Um, that was pretty much it for Halloween. Uh, the, the, the villains uh, pre-show, I think opinions are mixed on this one. I liked it. I thought it was horrible. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm often not really saying it's no. horrible. Like, sometimes it can still find Why? some good thing. I, said, I, I was talking to somebody else on Twitter about that. I said, maybe it was where we were standing and then the fact that people just, like, push up other people on top of their shoulders and I just missed half of it. But it just, it didn't, it didn't catch me. Like, it was just, there was just nothing. So I'll admit, I've seen it in the infinity area. So I was, I was yeah. on the floor. Uh, were then. you sitting yeah oh well gosh. back then it was allowed Whoa. um and i don't know if you've ever been in the infinity area when it's not very full you can literally use your bag as a pillow and completely yeah. lay on the floor it's like you're at the beach except you're watching a nighttime show um it's really nice i feel like this advantage is gonna is gonna disappear faster than mickey in the illusion manner um but <laughs> <laughs> when wow. the new when the new APs come out. <laughs> um but yeah um I I enjoyed it. I you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give it the elimination treatment because there's no story but it's a pre-show so it's just a bunch of scenes, right? It's a bunch of Halloween scenes. Um I did like the way they used the uh, parade lights and all the you know the LEDs in the trees around Central Plaza like the red and the orange and the purple and all that. But um yeah, uh, it, none of it was original. I think it was a compilation of stuff that they've made for Halloween parties, for previous shows, for private events. It was a mix of things. Some of the scenes are just like, you know, emojis on the castle, basically. <laughs> like, you know, Halloween images flashing on the castle. But I don't know. I thought it was, I thought it was fun. I thought it was like a fun thing. And they use all the fire at the end and you're like, whoa. And then, yeah. But, you know, I don't know. It's not offensive. I do think there is room. Well, I think there is room for a proper Halloween show. Uh, maybe not um, Maybe not every day, but I feel like for the Halloween soirees, for example, they could develop like a good 15 minute show that plays only for those parties, for example, like instead of, you know, of just like a quick one. I well, and I, and I think they had a good, they had a good start, right? I mean, they had a good start with what they had at the soirees this time around, where the castle would disappear and then yeah. the spire yeah. comes out and stuff like that. I think that was a good start to have something more come out of it, like Halloween screams or whatever it's called in Florida. Yeah, I feel like the, the Halloween soiree, um, there was, I think, 
I feel like there was a little bit of last minute, you know, change of heart in terms of like how much was invested in this in this party because I had understood from the first uh, press releases that it was going to have some kind of original parade or some kind of some kind of something and. And I think if they want these these parties to keep succeeding, they're going to have to invest in like at least a couple floats or a version of the you, parade. Do you think that's why the party didn't succeed in the way that maybe it used to? Because I, I think if you look at, I hate to bring it onto the topic of the reservation system, but here we go. The reservation system. Okay, so most people that go to these Halloween soirees are going to be annual pass holders. And the comments I saw leading up to this, this year's party especially, was I'm not buying a ticket because I can't go in the daytime. So what's the point? And I yeah. wonder if what they did was alienate sort of the target audience for the party, completely accidentally, because like this thing just exists on the site now. And if you can't go for all day, I guess a lot of people just went, you know what, I'm not even going to go for the party because what's the point? Yeah, well, so for us, something similar happened, right? We could get the reservations still for the Friday. We also had reservations for Sunday. But then for one of our friends that was joining us, we had to get the privilege ticket. And I couldn't use the privilege ticket system because my AP was renewing on the 24th of September. When I logged in, lo and behold, I can only get a ticket for the Friday. So the Saturday and the Sunday, we literally just spend in Disney Village and around the Chessy area. Uh, but we still went to the party. But yes, it was at a certain point like, okay, what are we going to do? Shall we still go or not? Or like, what's what's the plan? Because, yeah, it, it felt kind of weird, uh, to be perfectly honest. I, I did think, though, that it was a great party. I really enjoyed myself. But I think it also was due to the fact that we had two people join us who were not AP uh, holders. They also went to the party. It was their very first time going to Disney. Straight away, they go to a party, which is just crazy. And it was just amazing seeing everything through their eyes at that point. So I think I kind of enjoyed the party more because for them, everything was the first time. And that was just kind of awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I think everyone has like a different story, right? I, I personally, I am too old to go to these parties after a full day in the park. So I don't <laughs> mind. Like I will literally go at five o'clock and be like, I'm not going to the park before. But I understand that if you're traveling from far away and, and you want to maximize your time, then of course, if you can't get in, you know, but and I think like and the, the issue is not that the tickets aren't selling is the issue is that, you know, the, the, the offerings are good and there's lots to do. And I think, I think that, Everyone had a good time, but we're still not at the point of like not so scary, which has like iconic exclusive things that are coming back every year and that people expect when they pay that much for a ticket. If they keep increasing the price of those parties, like we need, I mean, I'm fine if they want to take Illusion Manor and and run it at night, but don't run the whole daytime parade by night and say that fun you get to see the parade by night i mean whatever you know that's yeah yeah i think that's the big thing about like like in ap parties in general i know that halloween isn't an ap party but like but like parties whenever they event organize special events they always like i think i generally feel like they have like the best intentions like oh it's gonna be this and we're gonna like have a great time and blah 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 and then when they kind of like the the fact that they communicate what's going to happen like a couple of days prior and like it always oh, yeah, kind of feels like a bit like it's kind of like a wait and see type thing. Whereas, like you said, if they had like, oh my god, you definitely know you're gonna see blah 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 at this party, and they're like, oh, like what a like, oh, like Oogie Boogie has a show, and blah blah blah, and like, oh, it's such an iconic show, and like whatever. Well, like things like you know, and like I know Mickey's not so scary benefits from the fact that there's like 118 times that you can go and see it, but like you know yeah i think the fact that it's like kind of always like la- last minute late wait and see and you're kind of like and, and that's the thing in general i'm not really a fan about uh, disneyland paris when they try and organize worries which is really it's really fun but it's also a bit like you pay your money and then afterwards they're like mm, we'll figure that out so like it's- you know, i did the i did the oogie boogie bash in uh anaheim and that's significantly more expensive than, than a Disneyland Paris party. So that's, uh, I think I paid $179 for the Saturday night party. Yeah, you paid a little bit more for D23, right? Because I think we paid yeah, $149 so we paid, for the Tuesday um, for after. D23 night, you paid essentially what Halloween week costs. Yeah. So $179. And it's a short party as well. It's 6 until 
six till eleven. So really, really short. I came away Which feeling is... like I did so much. I watched two parades. I met like six characters. I think I did like seven of the treat trail things. I did an but... attraction. I had dinner. I uh, I did the the thing, the Villains Grove thing. You do a lot for one hundred and seventy nine dollars, and it's all stuff that I can't do during the day. That is an insane price, though. I was like, sorry, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's, it's, it's really price, funny, right? It's much better. Because what we're saying it, it is shorter, but Disney and Paris started at nine. It wasn't until two. Anaheim starts at six, is until 11. It's both five hours. Yeah. Paris also, at eight, it's huh? double the price. Paris started at nine. You, were, you, nine you got in year. at six. It depends like which night, but yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, we went the first night. It started at nine. So that was five. Second like nicer at eight, I think. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, but it's true. I, I mean, for for Anaheim, it's 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 true. I mean, we went the first time last year because I really wanted to see it once, and we were walking up to the Oogie Boogie meet and greet, and I told my wife, I'm like, shall we just try it? At least we've done one thing. Then you know, if this is going to be a long ass line like Paris, at least we've seen Oogie Boogie. We were in and out in five minutes, yeah, and we had, had like bags with, full of. Um... I, I had sweets. the same like, with Ernesto de la Cruz. You know, he was in the the little bit by the blue sky thing. Yeah, and like the queue went all the way back to Web Slingers. I was like, okay, this is gonna be like an hour right here. It was five minutes. Yeah, I mean, also we have to remember that American guests are not starved for characters like we are. In Paris, you get two mates, you know, Mickey. Well, and no, but the, the trick or treat trails are completely Smee, different things anyway. You know? <laughs> they're more like um, they're more like selfie spots where they try and keep you moving, but yeah. you still get this really good interaction with the character. Yeah. And pictures still go quite well as well. I mean, there are yeah. moments that you can still take a good picture with a character, like the Sanderson sisters. You know, it it was a long line, but it went, I think, I think the same line would have taken us an, at least the entire night of Paris. It was a good 25 minutes in Anaheim. I think, it has, I think, I think yeah, it's a cultural the, the point, thing too. The, with the, the overall guests. point is more that, you know, you can charge almost whatever you want for these parties, as long as you're giving people a unique experience that they can't get during the day. And that they're going to come out and feel like they've done quite a lot of stuff. Like if you come out of a 90 euro party and you're like, well, I met Oogie Boogie. I had to wait four hours for him, but I did it. And then I got to watch a show. That's not the same 90 euros as $179 and you got all of this stuff done. But I still often feel in Paris that I, I haven't gotten the full value out of it. Right. So this time around, we actually missed both shows as in we missed the Isma show. Luckily, when I watched it afterwards on YouTube, I'm like, kind of good that we missed it but we also missed the villain show as we were all the way in the back while previous years we could actually watch it all from the front and it wasn't like a huge issue for us to get in somewhere but this time around those two those were the two things that i really missed and that was kind of sad everything else was quite good but does disneyland paris try to do too many little things instead of having like big things you know what I mean? Like if they, I had, feel like if, if, they had, if they had big things, then I feel like the I feel like the crowds on soirees and like Halloween soirees, whatever, the crowds always flow to things that you normally can't usually do during the yeah. day. Yeah. So, so like no one they, wants they, to see the parade because it's the I, same. So right. you lose but a I, lot of park capacity there by running this day parade that everyone has already seen. Whether if I you had an exclusive parade, if you had a, yeah, exactly. If you had an exclusive parade and you run it three times during the nights, first of all, the parade route wouldn't be that crowded. And second, it would really take a lot of people away from the meet and greets and from the yeah, shows. But this is this is the also this is the other problem with Paris, especially at um these these soirees, in that the way Oogie Boogie bashed it and I I'll, I'll say it so many times because I thought they did it really, really well. Is they take the really popular meets. So there's, there's, there was two really popular new unique meets. There was a Sanderson Sisters and there was and there was Bruno. And they're standard traditional meets, but they still move kind of fast. And then you take, uh, was it four, four or five new characters? And you put them behind this treat trail idea where a lot of people can see a lot of new characters really, really quick. Yeah. And Paris just have not figured out a way of making that rare thing and trying to make it super high capacity. But I think I to go back to what Ben was saying, I don't think that's like I think that that's the culture in Disneyland. And I think the problem is guests in Disneyland Paris are such are so starved for for like any type of character 
that is just always going to be. And like the thing as well is like, and I, again, I'm not having a go at anyone because I know we've all done it. But like then you like you see like groups and then they're like, oh, I want one with me, and then I want one with me and my partner, and then I want like one with my like one with like everybody, and then one with individuals. And you're like, or it's like I feel like in the states, uh, when from where I when I've been. It's like, oh, hi, picture, thanks, bye. Like, do you know what I mean? I feel like it's, it's it's the whole, like, I think it's the whole culture that means that I don't think, I don't foresee the way that it works in Disneyland, working in Disneyland Paris anytime soon, because it would take a lot more I, investment. I agree, I agree with you, Patrick. I, I, think, I think the treat trails probably could, because they're much more like selfie spots. So maybe they wouldn't move as fast as they would in, in, in the States, but I think they would move. Yeah. But the problem is like at Oogie Boogie and all those all those like special meet and greets, people wait in the queue. So they're like, you know, fuck everyone. Like I've waited 45 minutes. I've waited an hour and a half for this. I'm going to go yeah. in there, take my time, do my TikTok video, do my Instagram photo shoots. Yeah, they need to get better uh, at that. Do well. it by myself, do it with my friends, do it with my mom, do a group photo, uh, character, you know, and it's like, if you spend 10 minutes per guest, of course, you're going to get six six groups per hour. Like, but, do you remember, do you remember but on top of that, fan though, days? F- fan days was perfect. But on top of yeah. that, Ben, what you're saying, it's also that they rotate the characters out way, way, way fast. They're not out the entire night. Yeah. I mean, Ernesto de la Cruz was out from the moment the, the party started until the very last minute. Same with the Sanderson sisters. Because They're out from we the don't have the- enough. We don't have enough uh, friends and of the characters oh my God, this is hard. I, I, and I we that, don't have but... it and they don't have enough clothes <laughs> right but but this feels like an excuse right there are things yeah. you can do about that yeah and they just i mean don't... i'm hoping that all that money they're getting from this halloween party which has gone from like what 40 euros to 90 or something i mean i'm exaggerating but it's it's doubled in price in the past few years right oh yeah um, it's, it's gone pretty much from that yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, where is that money going i hope it's been reinvested and I think I think they need to stop thinking of it. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of those parties are made by the events group, and they're used to doing corporate parties, private parties that have like a thousand guests. This is a you know twelve, fourteen thousand guest party. This is almost a regular operating day on very off season. You know, and and people don't do the attractions. I don't get why they keep opening all the attractions. Open like Space Mountain, Pirates, Big Thunder, Phantom Manor. Done. Yeah. Like then, no uh, one. I, I, well, no, I, I disagree with that. I think. Who's doing the, the attractions on a party like that? No one. You're having all these cast members sitting around all night. You know. Yeah, but I think you still maybe you don't open up absolutely everything, but the vast majority of stuff you keep. I, don't, I think it's just like too much. Like you don't need Indiana Jones to be running. No, 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 you don't need. You know, Indiana like, Jones, and, but, but I mean, that will free you up, like ten cast members to go and you know help with guest flow, to go help with other things. Um, yeah. But but it, but it did feel busier, right? I mean, you just mentioned 10, 12, 13,000 people, but it did feel busier. I always had the feeling that at least twenty nineteen and prior to that, it was maybe half the crowd. Oh no, I've no. always felt like busy. No. Yeah. yeah. I always <laughs> feel yeah, busy. yeah. Halloween has always been quite busy. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if they create some kind of exclusive parade, it will be the thing to see. Like put some characters you don't see anywhere else and then run it three times in the night. Yeah. People will wait like half an hour before the parade, watch like a 20-minute parade. And then already you have people who are sort of blocked off for a whole hour there and they're not in the meet and greet queues. They're not in the shows. You, you frequently hear people doing not so scary and doing two nights because they need one night to do the entertainment, one night to yeah. do the characters. And I know like France is like, is, is, is into it, I suppose as other places, but I know specifically where Hocus Pocus 2 had a common eye and it's like a massive success. I feel like they copy and paste, bring the Sanderson sisters if it's either like the real like the real Sanderson sisters doing a sing and dance show, or if it's uh, um, Minnie and her friends as no, the they had the sisters. evil queen singing. Uh, I'll put a spell. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, that but, was that was some but, good singing. But, though, at least but, the first night. <laughs> but 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 if they did something like that and it was like three times a night, that would be like you wouldn't have to pay for a parade. I feel like it would be a massive kind of like draw as to people would want to go and see it. And you kind of have the whole, oh, it's like an exclusive thing that I want. Like, like, oh, like, like Arvid was the same. 
oh, I, maybe I want to go like one night to go and do the entertainment. And then one <laughs> night I want to go and do like other like meet and greets or whatever. And like, we get, I don't know, like they need to figure out something that could be like, hey, this is our jewel and our crown and not just, uh, eh, we'll figure it out and we'll tell you four days before. And I get it. And, you know, in Paris, Paris, also in the US, you have literally a fact sheet. This is what you're getting. You're getting this, 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 this. This is what you're paying for. And in Paris, it's kind of like, and more surprises is away to you. And I'm like, what are they? Because <laughs> I'm paying extra for this. And I would and like to know surprise. what products you're giving it's, me. <laughs> no, but like a surprise to you is not what they have in mind. So like, you're kind of like, oh, what if it was this? And then they're like, oh, no, it's actually just... Um, uh, Cowboy Cuckoo is open to 11. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, Oogie Boogie also, is not a Santa like, Mana this year. It's on the other side. Surprise! I feel like <laughs> in Paris, like everything is a surprise. <laughs> like, that's oh. just like, there will be some spooky stuff happening. We'll tell you more later. And usually that's because there are so many cooks in the kitchen that they can't figure out exactly how to do it or how it's going to be. So they don't want to commit, but like, that's not how it should be. Like the, the exact program of these parties should be fixed and signed off at least six months before. Well, so people can execute. The exact program. You know? I think you need the highlights. Yeah. But also the same thing is like, if you know, like, you know, when you go to not so scary at magic kingdom, you know what you're getting, you know, you're yeah. getting, like this show and this parade and this big thing in Paris it's like oh are we are we getting a parade and is it the same parade is it like the day parade is it a different parade do we have a custom parade oh okay this year it's the day parade by night okay but last time it was the day parade with different characters and the time before it was like well and so you know I feel like there needs to be they need to create a tradition with this party of having some exclusive stuff that people like and want to see again with improvement, with changes, with new characters, whatever, but like some staples that you're like, oh yeah, of course, it's the Halloween party. Of course, it's going to be the special Halloween parade. And of course, it's going to be the Sanderson sisters and Jack Skellington show and this and that, you know, because that's what people expect. And then you know what you're paying for, you know, it's like band-aids, tanks, because there were so many surprise and secrets that people are like, well, I'm not dropping a hundred euros. I didn't go. Because I was like, I'm not dropping 100 euros based on a couple flashy gifts saying that there's a surprise coming. Like, to me, it doesn't work. That kind of stuff doesn't work on me. I want to know what I'm getting, you know, and I'm sure it'll be fun. But like, I don't want to wait until the night to figure out if like, I wasted my money or not. Like, this is not the surprise I want. Oh, did I, is it worth it this year or not? Like, that's not, that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the selling point of those parties to be like, oh, is it going to be good or bad? Let's gamble. And I don't know. It should be always good and you should know what you're getting. And this is not to say that this year's party was bad. I think there's a there was a ton of good stuff. The the skull rock projections were redone to include the galleon. It was amazing. And you know, the Phantom Manor projections was great, the castle projections, there's a lot of good projections. <laughs> um, and you know, and and fun characters, the Isma show. I don't know. Should we talk about this? I, I completely I missed it, and the YouTube videos I saw was like, "I'm good, I missed it." The Isma this show is, doesn't bother me nearly as much as it bothers French. other people. Like I have heard some people be absolutely outraged that Isma is a face character, and I'm like, I don't really care that much for one night, or in this case, two no. nights. If she was but only like, in French, it would be nice if like Kronk would speak English. <laughs> <laughs> well, like yeah. even like in the villains in like the Sanderson sister show and Walt Disney World, they're all fa- I, I, most of them are face characters. I know Jafar and Captain Hook are face characters when they're normally not. So, like, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like people need uh, like, and I know. I think from talking in the uh, in the past, I know the Yisma costume is quite difficult to like maneuver and to like have a cast and whatever. Uh, so like I don't know I feel like it was like a weird kind of fun thing and it's literally twice and that's it it's not like it's not as if it's not as if Yisma is like out all the time and it was like it kind of follows the line of what they do in other Halloween parties so who cares I don't, I don't, I don't really care it's, it's interesting you came up with language actually Ben because generally speaking these parties they do not do a very good job of language at all. Mm-hmm. They just shove everything in French, I guess, because it's quick and easy to do. But like, if they're going to 
try and get more people from international attending they need to like mix it up a bit and do a little bit of half and half like they do for every other show that they do yeah yeah i agree I agree. And like, I mean, and again, that show that, you know, and I think I was writing that on our, our, on my weekly recap. I get it. I get it. Those parties, like you said, um, Patrick, I think uh, it's the time to do something a bit cookie, you know, because it's, it's one night only or two nights only, and you can do something fun. Um, but in the middle, it was not really Disney. It's like an outside, you know, magician troupe, whatever, a group that came in and did some numbers hosted by isma and i'm kind of like mm, is this where i want my ticket money to go i don't know you know yeah uh, it was fun it was fun i'm not saying it was bad and it's definitely one of those things that you're like you know okay that was that you know but remember uh when they had the meanies pirate academy like meanies pirate academy is like way off brand but it's disney you know well, i mean it's not that off brand they literally stole it from the disney fantasy and dream <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, but like, to, I don't know. I still find it a bit off brand when it's on stage and they're all like, ah, ah, and I'm like, okay, I don't know. It's so, <laughs> it's so camp, it's so fast. It's like, it's really, like, like, it's like the sweet spot of like cringe camp, but also Disney and fab. I love it. I can it's tell fun. you, I am, so I'm fun. on the wish at the end of this month, and I know that they play that show, and I am already a hundred percent invested in it. <laughs> yeah, I mean. So see, that's what I'm saying. Like it is kooky and weird, but it's Disney. And I feel like with the Isma show, it was kooky and weird, but like about like two thirds was not really Disney. Um, so anyway, you know, you, I'm sure, I'm sure they get feedback. I'm sure they try to learn. I'm sure they, you know, try to evolve. We'll see what they do next year. Um, uh, but but then, in the mean, yeah. But then I really liked the Minnie's Pumpkin Party though. Over at the ah oak, yeah yeah oak, oak, oak yeah. Green, so that Coast. came. That came from a, um, a, 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 they were they were they were phasing out uh, dance parties like a hardcore dance parties from the parks. So I don't know if they'll still do it at New Year's. They might still because New Year's is a little bit different. But for example, for Halloween, there was no electro party this year, and so this was the replacement to make it more family, more Disney, um, and it was fun. And it was the new. There was a new Ibiza remix of uh, Mon Qui S'Illumine. I don't know if you've heard it. <laughs> I, I saw, I saw yeah. your video of it. And you know what? I like My immediate comment was just, can they just let it go for one night? <laughs> yeah, no, no. And also, how many versions were made? I'm pretty sure this is like version 12 or something. Because, you know, and, and the other day they had a preview for cast members for uh, uh, Dreams of Christmas. And there's, there's another version, which actually I had before, but... It's never been. It's the one they used for the. Um, I mean, for a few things, but the AP party. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They use it's called Full of the Lights, and they they use yeah, it no, for uh, a few things. Yeah. But but I mean that that DLP thirty album, if they ever make one, will literally have eighteen versions of Monkey Si Lumine, <laughs> all pretty different, <laughs> um, which is kind of amazing. It reminds me of the old. Uh, it's Halloween, Halloween. Uh, there's like the the spooky mix. There's the oh, yeah. classic mix. <laughs> Do you remember what what anniversary or season? Had an Italian. Irish mix. Yeah. Oh, uh, magic everywhere. I've got that. magic everywhere. <laughs> had, a, had like an Irish mix for Patrick. That actually that came on like like <laughs> in the car, and I was like, "What am I listening to? Why? Why? What is this? Is an odd version?" They were like, "Well, we're definitely going to need an Irish mix. Let's make it. Of course." Like... They made they made two Christmas <laughs> versions of that song too. They made the parade yeah. version, uh, and then they made like a. I don't even know how to explain it. It's just the parade. It was the parade version, but with like a few like bells. <laughs> it oh, yes. was few bells. That is like the song that I get completely crazy with. But all the bells, like you're in a car and you're like, what? What are they doing? Stop raping this whole song. <laughs> and I mean, you know, Christmas is coming, and we haven't had a DLP thirty Christmas yet, so maybe there are more versions that we don't. Oh my know. gosh! <laughs> but if you're listening and you have the Ibiza remix, uh, you know where to find me. I would like to have this remix. But so going really back to, to Minnie's pumpkin party, right? I mean, to me, that was that was amazing. The only thing I think they forgot was that the area they put it at was super, super, super tiny. Yeah. Like we were happy that we walked in and one of the cast members said, oh, we're going to rotate out in five minutes. Just like slowly walk in. You can get to the front. But I saw complaints from people like, oh, no, it was way too busy. I didn't see anything. I heard the music, but that was about it because it was just so, so tiny. 
And, you know, before they used to have the dance party in, fo- in front of like the Pueblo trading posts. Yeah. Um, I mean, granted, you can't use the frontier on the gazebo, but I mean, they can put character somewhere else, but that's a good area because it's actually quite big. And then you have all the benches from Cowboy Cookout because it's obviously October and not really, not, not that many people are going to be sitting there. So it I kind of uses as an overflow or if you want to see it from the side, I feel like they could have built like a little stage maybe in front of the entrance of uh, the um, the playgrounds and put the lights there and build the, build the little thing there. And then you could have that party there. But yeah, that area back then, this is what they used to do the Frozen makeovers doing Frozen Summer, remember? <laughs> Wandering Oaken's trading post. Yeah, which is still there, by the way, though it's fine. One of those weird TLP things. No one no one ever brought up the idea of removing it, so it's still there. Well, and for yeah. the Lion King Festival, they even had that whole drumming thing going on there as well. The drumming class in oh, which yeah. you could not yeah. drum. You could oh, just I remember, watch that. The I remember that summer. Drum. That was a fun summer. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good season. That was good. Anyway, with the the really good show that lasted one year, yeah, yeah. And now the floats are the some of the floats are used in Dream and Shine Brother. So good luck getting that show back, like ever. Oh, that that mini pre parade is uh, terrible. Oh yeah, yeah. Time to shine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean it's not it's not terrible in the sense that let's say that you're from you're a guest from Japan and you've come to see Halloween or Christmas and you know, you're not going to come again for years. It gives you a ton of a a taste of the anniversary. You see a couple of characters, you see those floats that you've seen on the internet. I think it's cute. I like that they do it. It's like a little thing. And I'm like, you know, it does bring a little remind you of the tertiary anniversary. And it's not, it's not going to, it's not air charm, but I think it's cute. I I think they chose the wrong characters for it. I think it should be uh, some of the VIPs in their 30th outfits though. But you can't because because the 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 Halloween parade is coming right after Star Wars parade is coming right after. Like yeah. I thought, I thought they should have ran this as a pre parade to Star Wars parade just once a day, and that yeah, way it, it everyone is lot. already on the parade routes waiting for the thing. And you're like, oh, we're celebrating our anniversary. Here's you know all the characters that you can't see currently because the other show is not running. And then yeah. after that, you have Stars on Parades coming out, and it makes like a but nice... The, are those, yeah, are those, are those maybe those cast or those, you know, cast are probably being right. used to go off and do a parade then afterwards. So. You actually but see I like that. the idea. I like, you know, no, like, I, I hear you, yeah. Like in, Shanghai, like in Shanghai Disneyland before the parade, where it was, I was there, but it was like they were still celebrating their first anniversary, technically. And they like, you know, remember they used to have like the family of the day or like mm-hmm. the show very cool. It's nice to have a little pre-parade to like the real parade because like the, the parade, regardless whether we like it or not, the parade is like a massive like part of the park day. And I like when they make a big kind of deal about, hey, we're about to see a parade. It's going to be real fun. But before the parade happens, here's something cool. And it kind of gets you pumped up to be like, oh my God, I can't wait to see the parade. Because like, mm-hmm. oh my God, it's like, it's like a proper like, and, and then, like, we talked about this on the podcast before. It's, like, things that only Disney can do. Only Disney can, like, do a parade that's, like, makes you feel something or, like, you get that little minute of interaction with, like, a character and you're, like, oh, it sets you up for the day and you're, like, oh, I had a great day. I'm ready for six hours of nothing until fireworks <laughs> later on tonight. I can't <laughs> wait. Like, 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 you know, things like that. I don't know. I feel like it's nice to pump up, like, a parade just because, like, you know, I, I I know Disney stars on parades has its issues, but it's like a Disney parade is always better than no parade. So true. Good. Point. That's true. And I don't know, like, you know, going when I went to uh we were in Anaheim for D23, it was weird. There was just no parades. Yeah. Anywhere. Day, nights. Yeah, it was weird because uh the parade was sure just parade, like, like finished used. the week before. Zero. Yeah, the, well, yeah. The, the whole Main Street. Yeah, that was just weird. And then on Sunday, yeah. still have a panel about the history of the Main Street Electrical Parade. This, this, that's just like stabbing people. <laughs> so <laughs> it was it was a very good troll, though. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, that, and you know, and like Patrick said, Stars on Parade has its issues, and I think like it is. I I miss the days where we were all getting excited to see Stars on Parade and. and it's always had not enough dancers and that kind of stuff. Fine. But uh, I feel like it used to be like more vibrant and it's not, it's not the fault of the cast members. It's just like a lot of the floats are feeling like really tired. I mean, those floats from Tokyo, like, you know, are we, are they going to wait but for the Lion King float kinda, to just tip over to change some, it? Or we, would, like, we weren't saying the same thing about the old parade. 
Yeah. Magic like losing that actually just... felt to me it feels like we're oh, losing no, no, but really like magic everywhere no okay wait magic everywhere no. magic on parade did not have a zones soundtrack and remember it used to stop at the end of magic everywhere and they all they all had their arms in the air and it was like <laughs> magic everywhere and then it was but like you know, we we heard that song like, at the disney 100 thing in a couple of weeks ago i was like oh i remember this song i really like it <laughs> But but it's to me, not like a if, bad if, song. But like, don't loop it ten times for the parade. That was just a disgrace. <laughs> oh, but but to me, that that thing. song actually lifts up your spirits compared to uh, Stars on Parade. Stars on Parade still has that I don't know has that weird vibe to it. Da, 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 da. Like it's that that dissonant minor chord in it, and I'm like, I don't know. It just yeah. feels weird. I feel like songs since then have become a lot more upbeat in terms of like the bpm and like the the more dancey like when you and this is just going to be a nice segue into the next segment um uh, when you when you uh listen to shine a light like i know that everyone has their opinions about it but it is a banger and i'm not only saying that because i've started playing at the gym for the past week uh (laughs) but (laughs) but you know what i mean like it's um I don't know. It, it just, like you said, like Magic Gave like that kind of song, it just, uh, it just like lifts your spirit and, and makes you happy. And just like Ready for the Ride, you know, no matter how many times we hear it, when Ready for the Ride comes up, you know, there's no way you're not going to bop to your head and be like, you know, like it's just, um, yeah, it's like those infectious parade songs. And it's true, like, I mean, yeah, I agree that Stars on Parade maybe doesn't have that factor. When you listen to, um, uh, what is the Tokyo Parade? Uh, dream... Dream Up. Dream Up. Dream, dream up. up. Like, in Tokyo, they have the they have this gift. Like, I don't know how they make... who. Like, and sometimes... It's, start, do you know what to start at that song where it's like, ah, dream... And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god! Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so you're like, even, ah! even, even in Paris, right? So you look at the the last five years ish of parade songs. So you've gone from uh, oh, you've forgotten the name of it. What 25th anniversary song? Uh, the parade song. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, the very is now parade. No, 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 parade song. Well, well, no, oh, 25th, the parade song. 25th was Stars on Parade. Stars on Parade. Yeah. Sorry, completely <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Lost in the magic. Lost in the magic. Yeah. There you, go. you look at that, and then you look at every sort of song that's come in the last five years since, and like, there's a definite progression in how Disneyland Paris have put parade songs out, and they are completely different to how they were five years ago. Like Vive la Vie. Well, that was that was actually ten years ago now. Uh, but uh, are you scared? Uh, are you scared enough? Or brave enough? Even I don't know what's going on with my memory today. Uh, Christmas is here. Like they're they're all very different to what we've got now with um, Dream and Shine Brighter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I like, like the Shadow direction Lights. that we're going yeah. in. We're going into like a nice kind of like upbe kind of like modern. Kind of yeah, like that's a, where like, we are. Yeah. And like yeah, and, like be and, over the top and use the bass and stuff. <laughs> shine a li- like shine shine a light. I actually really I was less, I one day like a couple of weeks ago I was like I really want to listen to Shine a Light and I was like mm. it's like it's re it's like I, I, listening to it. I like uh, Christmas songs. I feel like are easy to kind of do because you just put those reindeer bells, and I'm like, oh my god! So like, you know, but like, Shine Light is like, I really like it. It's like, and I'm really excited to see what the, like see that prey come back because I like, even though I was pretty medium about it when we did the like the episode about it, it's it's a nice prey, but I'm just <laughs> excited. I'm just excited for Christmas to like come back and. I yeah. miss I miss Christmas is here. I put that on the other day. I was like, this is a really good song. I oh, can just go to, like, <laughs> just go to <laughs> Disneyland and you can listen to our main street over there. It's fine. And so Christmas this year, and see, this is my uh, swift transition. Uh, Christmas this year is uh, getting a little beefed up. There's not that much difference, but uh, th- you know, we have the new LED on the castle that we saw for the first time um, last on night. Most of the turrets. <laughs> on most of the turrets, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, there was budget for seven, not eight. Maybe next year we'll get number eight. Uh, well, yeah, I, as I, I said to you earlier, then, like, if you look at all the key visuals for this year's Christmas season, like, that turret actually doesn't have the LED lights on it on any of them. Yeah. <laughs> is it missing a turret or is that No, 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 no. So the turret's there. It just is the only one in some of the visuals that just doesn't have any lights on it. Yeah, because it doesn't have any in real life. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah yeah it's, I don't know. it's, it's weird so, that a they've missed it and then it's also weird that's just like when you look at the visual you're like oh this was always planned feels weird <laughs> yeah so real yeah. life is actually mimicking concept art here which <laughs> doesn't always happen <laughs> yeah. um they're really cool i like them i can't wait to see them in real life because obviously you just can't tell from video right the video is just video um i i wasn't super impressed on video but again these lights in general like, that's so hard to see in real life uh, in, yeah. on video. Yeah. and and to be fair i had seen some like tests where they were like in cold white on max and it was horrible and i was like i hope they don't do that and so i'm glad to see that you know they've used all the nuances and the sparkling and the the movement they can do it they're basically video screens they program like some of those video walls you know uh, on the computer you can you can make shapes you can make mickeys on them you can make uh rings you can make uh, sparkling things you can make fire like i just posted actually um so could be fun and that's going to be used with everything from the from the christmas season like the the tree lighting the when the parade goes by the you know in the evening maybe they'll just leave them on sparkling i'm, I'm assuming you, these gotta, are, you gotta leave them on yeah, these are new Christmas lights, I'm assuming. Um, and now, question, uh, they're used in daylight, so does that mean that we're going to keep them until September 30, and then it's going to be so close to Christmas that they're actually going to stay until the following Christmas and no, and basically so. forever? Because if they keep using them for daylight... I don't think so. I don't think, I don't think you do that. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, otherwise, if, if it's, it's that old saying, you know, if, if everybody's special, then nobody is special. Yeah, but I mean, in Disneyland Paris, it's not really how things go. <laughs> yeah, but I think you just, you just ruin the effect at Christmas. If if you do it every day, you just you get to the end of Christmas and you're just like, eh, okay. Yeah, I mean, remember that. Remember those years that they were having a uh, frozen summer fun, and they l- kept the light cages, the old ones. Yeah, that was weird though. That was really weird. <laughs> Until they kept them all year because by the time Frozen Summer Fern ended, it was like, oh, it's almost Halloween, which is almost Christmas. And so they just threw them on. And then they removed them and then they would come back. It was a bit weird. It was a, that was a weird time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a weird time because they were trying to capitalize on Frozen without really knowing what to do. I mean, let's face it, they're still not capitalizing on Frozen. It's not going to come till 2025, which is how many years after the first movie? But yeah, um, um, they've got, well, Paris had this, Paris was the first to get Frozen. They had it in the parade before yeah. the film even came out. So yeah, like, I think they're okay. Otherwise, uh, Encanto is like the one that the whole company's like gone, I did not expect people to like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we did have a cool Encanto uh, sequence uh, at New Year's last year. Remember that? Yeah. Then we came back. It would be cool. I don't know. Like stick it into something. Imagine, really- imagine, like in like for like imagine to rejudge stairs on parade. They took out like crush and put in like the Casa Madrigal and like had yeah. like that would be like. Oh my God, Stetson Parade is back, but we're going back in time. Sorry. Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And then I'm you apprehensive know, over the snacks at Christmas, if we're allowed to say that. Yeah. Uh, where are the snacks? P.S., by the way. No, we don't know. I'm just apprehensive because I need to check on that. They are <laughs> remind me over. tomorrow. <laughs> they are like all over the place with snacks at the moment. Like... Well, as long as they bring back the gingerbread christmas tree i'm fine that would be good yeah that was kind of the only really good christmas snack There's remember a few nice things this um remember our friend e was uh surviving on eating just those um when he was in the parks he was having them for lunch and for dinner and yeah, he, he was just he having like them as much these days they, he said that they changed the recipe oh they put something on it they put some like coating yeah anyway uh, but, yeah, Christmas, yeah, look, I, Christmas is so easy to do snacks for, and for some reason, like they kind of get some of it right, and then like half of it, they're just like uh, make some Nutella donuts. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I would even like say that Disney is so easy to make snacks for, and it's kind of incredible how they can mess this up ever. I'm still about sorry, everything. But I'm so it's sorry, Disney. But I'm so sorry for my thirtieth anniversary because I'm like we have Joe Whip and we have. We have like Mickey Bears. Right, but we have like turkey bags. Oh yes, of course. So, so yeah, like, 30th like, anniversary, they knocked it out of the park. 
And then you get to like Halloween. It's just like, uh, okay. <laughs> Let's go for no, a black I've... burger again. <laughs> I'm trying to think what snacks I had for Halloween. I yeah, even... that's the problem, right? I, I've oh, been I had the rice every single day, and I've thing. barely seen anybody talk. The uh, orange rice crispy thing. I had it on the first day of the season, and then it like disappeared for two weeks or something, or for a week. So we oh, had the I... we had the cobweb ice cream from the old oh yeah, world, which was good. Ice, ice cream we... or or that mousse thing? Well, it's a mousse, right? It's it's yeah. an ice cream cone. I tried, buy, I, yeah. I tried to buy that. She charged it for me. Went back and was like, "We don't have any." I was like, "I stood in a in, in a four person twenty minute queue to for you to be like, no, we don't have it." I'm like, great. Uh, Did they so, offer you some Nutella base snack instead? I, I was like, literally, <laughs> give me my money back. And she, I, I paid my card, and she was like, "You're gonna have to wait until I open my till." I was like, "Why do you have to open your till to give me my money back on my card?" And she was like, "Here's four euros." I was like, oh, "Okay." Uh, but <laughs> snacks. Sorry, I, I, I have to. I honorable mention has to go to um, March Hair Refreshments and their ice cream selection. Is those are good. On point the Cheshire Cat. If you're listening. Just do the Cheshire Cat thing. Oh my God, it's so many different flavors. It's delicious. Literally, uh, it's only five euros. Do it. Yes, it's reasonably priced, which I'm really surprised about. And if you don't like it, just send me, like, send me your PayPal. I'll pay you. It's so good. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's so nice. So, so going back so to the Halloween snacks, So good or right? your money back from Patrick. Yeah, I will I'm like, I don't, what's wrong with you if you don't like this? It's There's lovely. a money back guarantee. Right? I love it. It's so nice. So, so, so going back to the Halloween snacks. So we tried to get the, the, the apple at Hyperion. So they oh, allow yeah. you to order and then they give you a snack. And you're like, hold on. Wh- where's the apple? I even ran out. I'm like, Wait, okay. what? Yeah. So what did they give you? Yeah, uh, we got the... the Star Wars thing. What was it again? Now that we got, no, no, we got the 30th anniversary cake, like the little <laughs> oh, chocolate yeah. thingy with yeah. the with the chocolate on top. I'm like, uh, how can you run out of these things? And then she's like, if yeah. are you guys still here tomorrow? Yeah, just come back to the party. We're gonna have them again. I'm like, how? What? <laughs> yeah. But then the same on October 1st, they didn't have the cakes at Victoria uh, Victoria's. Yeah, I'm like, so it's the that's day always of an the... issue. But I like, saw some people with the Rice crispy cakes uh, that you were talking about, Ben. Like some people going, yeah, I'm really looking forward to having them. And then they got there and they went, this is like day three of the season. Yeah. They are all they out. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't know. It's like, are you trying to make money or not here? You know? But hey, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. So um, so that's that's it for Christmas. Uh, Dreams of Christmas has been changed a little bit, I think. Uh, so we'll have to see what the show is. I do have a video. But I'm, I'm super excited it's back. And I'm just so confused it's back, though. I mean, it's the same what they did with Mickey's, uh, what was it, 90th anniversary a couple of years ago, 2019, hmm. where they brought it back as a surprise for Mickey for everybody, where the whole park just went berserk. It's like yeah. dreams. It's just... And, and, um, and the same now, right? I mean, like, why? I'm happy they're bringing it back for limited time which they just took from anaheim where everything is limited time and they just bring it back every two years but you know what that's but, not, that's good that's good though because it creates like a whole like oh my god for close away come and catch this thing I, I, and it's a free it's like it's it's cheap because it literally they're just even if they're gonna like update it they're just gonna like press play and it's bring just gonna Disney dreams for january through march yeah, it won't be okay, that. that is not coming back but like I oh, saw that, that would be like a way to get fans in and be like, hey, from January through March, we got Disney Dreams. And like all the fans be like, right, I'm there. And but well, here's the thing. The the issue here, I think, is the same as the front lots BGM. Let me explain. <laughs> it's the basic fans. It's just like, you know, again, we are the basic guests. We're our fans. We know everything that's available. We've seen a lot of things. We want to be, we want to see different things, niche things, cool things, fun things. But 90% of the guests who come to Disney Parks and Disneyland Paris, they are families and they have a very uniform list of stuff that they want to see. Toy Story, Captain Hook, Pooh, Stitch, uh, yeah, Mickey Mini, that's it. So basically, sure, but you, you know, can, like- no, but what I'm saying is like you can switch it up for Disney Dreams of Christmas because 
Disney Musical Christmas has franchises like Frozen, like Toy Story, like all those things that people still want to see. So you won't have marketing on your ass being like, why are you changing our show? People are unhappy because they haven't seen so, so, and so in a, in a, in a projection show. But like, for example, for Halloween, I feel like it's harder to make a nightly Halloween show because then you're going to what center on Disney villains, unless you manage to like, you know, I don't know, get some like Phantom Manor section with Stitch in it or some crap like that. But like, it's much harder to satisfy, you know what I mean? You know, it's much harder to satisfy the masses with those shows. I'm, and so- I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely. And I know loads and loads of people that don't go to this, I've got, that I drag to Disneyland Paris once a year or once every two years or once every whatever. However, and when they see Illuminations, they're like, that was great. I had a great time. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Like, it was like, loved the it. Cat- the castle, ex- castle exploded and Lion King was there and that's my favorite. And like, yeah. you know, I, I know we just don't like it, but like, you know, I, it, it, it doesn't make any sense for them to try and please us when they can just well, get like a 90, they can get, the, no, but they can get 90% of the people standing in Central Plaza excited about Illuminations and they'll be us standing in the corner with the 10% we're like, we're grumbling. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, in like, general, true. in general, yes. But I, I think when you get to this low season that we're about to go into after Christmas, that January through March bit is well, then a that slog really send, for everyone. That, 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 then that doesn't really send, I've, like from like a marketing perspective, that sends mixed messages to kind of like they're like oh so sometimes it's this show and then sometimes it's not this show so they have to go into like that's why I feel like Disney and goes on with this whole like oh limited time bring it back special occasion here's loads of food and merch enjoy it like it's yeah, an event. But I guess I guess the question is like who's actually saying at home going oh yeah I definitely want to go to Disneyland Paris in February because that sounds like a really fun idea. There's not many people doing that because it I mean, ain't fun in February. <laughs> you know, actually, from mid-February, it is cool holidays in France and until yeah. mid-March, this is like actually getting peak. The only really off-season right now is right after New Year's Christmas. when people go yeah. back to work until maybe the first week of February. There's only really one month left of off-season because then in March, once you're done with the winter uh breaks then you have the spring ones that start basically a week later so like the and first, the wrong, the the wrong first french off. zone that went early in february yeah. are going to be the first going towards the end of march so then then you go into the spring and then it's summer and it's halloween and christmas and boom you get year it's like yeah it i don't know I, it's um it's a tough one it's a tough one and and you know it, I mean, you've, they've got, they've you've got all full, seen right? that Pirates and princesses. They were like, ah, throw it in the off season. Like they did yeah, and, that, and that didn't really work. Oh, that's because it's an expensive season that they. Yeah, but I mean, it wasn't full, and it wasn't the same vibe. Even the fans were like, eh, it's cold. Princesses are high energy shows, but it's in the middle of the winter. Excuse me. <laughs> um, I had. I remember at one time I had eight layers on, and I still had a great time. I wasn't warm in any way whatsoever because I was freezing, but I didn't care. Yeah, no, yeah, I mean, I, of course, yeah, of course, it was, it was still fun. I'm not saying it was bad, but like, you know, it's just like you've, you've all been at Disney Illumination, and as soon as those first few notes of Let It Go start, all of Central Plaza. <gasps> I'm, I'm usually in the bit that after Disney Delight happens, you know, like when there's like all the APs are just like, right, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, bye, bye, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah yeah i mean there's two big moments in disney illumination apart from the you know the beginning and the finale because it's like impressive but in franchise you know terms there's lion king and there's frozen those are the big sellers in disney paris you give yeah. me some frozen give me some lion king and the, here we are and they know? literally like, just... it could literally be like mickey mouse belgian and like the for, in front of the castle for 20 minutes as long as like Frozen and Lion King were like top of the yeah. like, everybody like, oh my god, that was amazing. So I think I, that if I, they I, really want to hit it big, they should do the Frozen Lion King season. <laughs> <laughs> the Frozen like, like, cold Frozen Frozen Lion King. like warm. <laughs> the yeah. Frozen do you, King. <laughs> do you remember when they tried to like they tried to make that whole like festival of the Lion King? And then they're like, we want to do a jungle show. Uh wait, uh Festival of the Lion King. And jungle. And the jungle. And the jungle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, so come over, Lion King fans. <laughs> but watch our jungle show. It's good too. <laughs> Actually, it turned was, out to be that was, better. That, but... <laughs> that was good, though. That was good. Uh, that was, that good. was one of the best shows I think they've I, ever done. 
Yeah, the the uh, Jungle Book Jive. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I've enjoyed the Lion King rhythms of the Pride Land show, but like, I, I don't need to see it 15 times when yeah. I go. I did, do you want to buy the CD? Because it's a magic offer in store. Yeah. store because I'm like, <laughs> I, I have seen it. I've still I have only stood, seen it twice. <laughs> I have stood in Central Plaza for all four performance of the Jungle Book Jive and many times. And some days that is the only thing that I did. <laughs> did uh, for for me, after, after the half marathon, though, pouring rain last show of the season. Oh, outstanding out there. That was just so good. And everybody was just that there. day. People were dancing in the rain. Oh like, gosh. what's her name? Um, you know, uh, anyways. I the rain, no, no, you know. Um, uh, sorry. I don't do TikTok. I saw it right there. <laughs> She's an actress. She was in Charlie's Angels. She, Cameron Diaz. No, Drew Barrymore. Uh, yes, Barrymore. there's this video of Drew Barrymore who's like in the rain and she's like, you oh, gotta enjoy one. the moment. It's... I'm like, did, did we see one of those at, at, at uh, Central Plaza? But no. No, but it was a, <laughs> it was a bit like that. Yeah. It was people just like screaming and dancing in the rain. No one cared. Everyone was just like soaked to the bone and they were like, eh, what a... <laughs> That was so okay. great. So I actually have a really funny story about Frozen, right? So we were just talking about the whole Frozen bit and people just like so amazed when Frozen comes on. I still remember Disney Dream say at a certain point, add a Frozen in there, right? Let it go. And Christina and I, we were standing and I think at the affinity uh, section or something. And all of a sudden you hear the doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm. and there's a French guy behind us. He just screams at the top of his lungs. Oh, putain. <laughs> <laughs> so each time when we hear the song, it's like, yeah, so you guys scream. Oh, putain. But no, yeah, no, no. I mean, everyone still gasps when it comes up. I, I, I gasped for the other song, not for the Let It Go bit. Like what I, I gasped for the where um oh Anna and then like she gets frozen and then hey Anna, hey Anna. Oh yeah. Then she yeah. like warms up again. Yeah. To me, that is that is an amazing moment. I mean, and that goes nicely into uh the finale of the show. But I love the you opening. Don't, you don't like the, the Star Wars to up transition? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah. remember the balloon house in space during episode uh <laughs> Yeah, it is what it is. I can't believe we're back to bashing elimination. I mean, it's really a, a recurring <laughs> I mean, Christmas, theme on this Christmas, podcast. Christmas was, Christmas was like, yeah, but did you like? Oh, Christmas is gonna happen Disneyland Paris, but illuminations. <laughs> How shit is it? Do you remember? Let's talk about that. <laughs> actually, that's that's actually kind of a good thing, right? So you said that uh, people aren't gonna be like, well, I can see illuminations from this time to this time. Well, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. gone. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, Friday, it'll be a good test. I think it'll be a good test, and you know, I think as long as they manage to fit in those franchises that people want to see, I think there is there's a good pitch for having seasonal nighttime shows. You could have yeah. a summer show. You could have, I mean, I think for Halloween is harder, but Christmas, summer, and then in between, you know, why not? Well, but for Halloween, they could do a lot of stuff, right? Just look at Halloween screams in Anaheim. With Jack Skellington and yeah, then have all like the villains come in there. <laughs> yeah, but it's hard. It's a hard sell for people who aren't really like super into villains, you know? Well, when you're, you're visiting Disneyland Paris during Halloween. I know, I know, but like some people are maybe you are just, but like, you know, again, we're fans. We know, we know Halloween is a whole month at Disneyland Paris, but when I went with my parents, they were like, it's October 5th. It's not Halloween. I'm like, wait, yes, it is. It started five days ago. What are you talking about? Let's you know? just bring them to, to World then, Ben. Next year, bring them to World. <laughs> August. No. It's Absolutely August 5th. August. Oh I know, right? God. I know. I know. I'm talking about, I think there is room for more Halloween at Disneyland Paris. It's a season that sells. Oh, yeah. and they should really Absolutely. get it from like, I'm not but asking for happening August. next year. <laughs> like, well, it ain't happening next year. That's for sure. So here we go. But are. They, need to, they need to go all into it. Because like, the, like, just having like random pieces of merch and they need a whole line and it needs to be uh like those mugs that did the, the whole light up thing when you put the hot water into them they were like struggling to keep them on the shelves so like oh, you yeah. know they, i remember they, it was you that day who was in the yes. <laughs> though, like yeah. I, th I thought the merch and this team is for christmas actually this year the merch is much better now they've sort of brought it a lot more in line with the american parks yeah it, it's oh, what they wow. needed to do a long time ago the only yeah. thing that annoys me though is seeing actual US merch in the Paris. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. just drives me crazy. Cause I'm like, just can we not like like they did such a great job with the 30th anniversary merch. 
they they when they sit when they sit down and think about it, they can figure it out. So like you know, I'm like the the fact that there's like we were saying earlier about the Halloween swearies, the fact that there's not like a like a like a standardized Christmas line or a standardized like Halloween line merchandise needs to like you know I I know I I maybe it's super hard to like get all the stuff done or whatever, mm-hmm. but like you know if you start prepping now. You should be able to get something ready for like speaking, October 2023. With, um, standardized Halloween merch. Can someone please write to me if you are the person that buys the Halloween pasta? Oh, like, we so actually have a pasta. Pasta. We, have, we have a pasta. Oh my downstairs. god. You're the oh guy. God, it's Arvid. It's Arvid. <laughs> it's Arvid. We also always buy the, the, the Christmas one. <laughs> and then do you make it? We warm it up and eat it, yeah. Or we ship it off to Christina's wow. mom in the US. Every oh, single time, every year this happens, and I see it come out, I'm like, who is the person buying so, this? <laughs> so we looked at the Christmas one last year. We were like, we got there what the day for one of the first days. We looked at it in the morning, or we will pick it up at night. We walked back, sold out. And it didn't come back for like two, three more weeks. So people are buying it. People, people like, like it. overpriced. This, is, this, is, this amazes me. <laughs> yeah. Like well, why pasta? not? It's like a novelty item i don't know i'm looking forward to trying the, the christmas popcorn i actually bought something special which i was asking patrick for because we were all in anaheim when they finally released it the stupid cycle up merch with the the tarp from the castle i did i was just thinking about when you said the pasta oh you want oh, the, the recycled stuff upcycled stuff yeah yeah uh, I bought still one on of sale. Things. it's still for sale yeah they still have a couple of items it's, too expensive. it's insanely expensive yeah <laughs> yes yeah. it's like a little e is 35 euros but i was like yeah, that's the habit. Period. Yeah, I am no, gonna you get can have your your rained on top. Yeah. Have you seen? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, right. Have you seen the the new uh, Mickey's dazzling Christmas parade float inspired um, figurines that came out today? Yes, they have they the amazing. cutest little squirrel. Have you seen the squirrel, Arvid? Yes. No, I the haven't. You need to like have the, the squirrel. Thing. Let me. I need to have the squirrel. The squirrel. Yeah, you need to it's have not a duck. I'm not gonna go for it. Must him. Be. Oh, he's adorable. That's cute. He's from oh. I don't know from which unit that you can see better actually. This photo. Oh, um, he's, he's I don't know from cool. which unit he is. I think he's from the Mickey, the opening unit. He's on the side of the float and he's just the cutest. And I think it's so random that they made merch for him because it's like, how is this a priority? But I love it and I'm gonna buy it. But it's 50 euros. It does nothing. It, okay, okay. But then all the all the other Christmas <laughs> merch. So they, 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 the Mickey blow mold <laughs> that they have at the gallery. The what? The Mickey blow mold. It's like the, the U.S. style lights that you put out in your garden. It's like it's oh, a yeah, yeah. plastic thing, and then they just color it with some color, mm-hmm. and it's Mickey. They just brought out those. one, and I'm like, they should have just brought out the Fab Five, and everybody oh. would have bought it and just put it out in, the, in their it's yard. On, uh, it's on Shop Disney as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, but they only have the Mickey, right? Also shop this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, I was I was telling a friend like they should do a season T-shirt. Like every year they should be like you know Halloween 2022 Disneyland Paris, but like a good one, not the one from you know Disney fashion that you print yourself. Like no, no, no. One. They want it. They're they're gonna bring back one where it's gonna be a white T-shirt and it's gonna be a black background and it's gonna and with be a square. On. It's gonna be <laughs> like ironed on. Uh, it's a poster, it, baby. It's gonna be the poster <laughs> of the season. Yeah, no, yeah, there you go. so like not that, but like you know how you go to like you go to like not so scary or or me, um, you know the Christmas like parties and you have like those t-shirts and I would totally buy one every season because so, it's a, it's a souvenir it has the dates and you're like yeah he's my Halloween one in Disneyland. <laughs> Same right? here. It was my third shirt in the row right? now. 2019, exactly. 21, 22. That. Exactly. And you could have like a Halloween shirt and a Christmas shirt at least, plus whatever other season they make. If they do make a Toy Story season next summer, like give me a Toy Story Festival 2022 t-shirt, like whatever it's called, you know? Like I feel like that's the kind of stuff that you're like, oh, that's a real souvenir. Not yeah. the same stuff you can buy on Shop Disney, you know? Exactly. Um, I mean, you can buy everything on Shop Disney now. You can't so, buy like, everything. Mm. Disney, you know? <laughs> They've gotten better at this. Well, it's because there's no more physical stores, so they have to put it somewhere. But anyway, um, yeah. So Christmas starts on saturday 
Um, will the episode be up before then, or will it be like? <laughs> well, will, sorry. Uh, will the episode be up by Saturday, or will it? Is this oh, is this like a read? Time? Yes, it will be out. <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't know because I don't know. Maybe because maybe like Christmas has been happening. So if Christmas has been happening, I hope you've been enjoying Christmas. If it hasn't no, happened, yeah, yet, no, right. It depends when you listen, but I will aim to edit and post it uh, soon. This is this is a super good part for the people listening. I know, right? Thursday, I think it's gonna be a Thursday. It's gonna be a Thursday. If uh, if you are listening to this, Ben did it. He he edited it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that depend, depends if on you're when not, you're listening I'm, to it. Or if you did it well, he you just bet well. There is the date that is out. Anyway, we're getting lost, not in the magic because but, apparently but then, we don't like this song anymore. <laughs> but then you're you're going this weekend, right? So you're going to be the opening weekend. Yes. Yeah. Jeff. And you know, if you're listening, yes, if you if you're listening to this on Thursday. There is no soft openings on Friday, so there is no need to rush, but uh, you can still see the characters in their Christmas outfits Friday morning, um, and you can see uh, Disney characters in their Christmas outfits at the studios on Friday, but nothing else. So no parade for you. Um, Only five days, you know. um, So it's 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 a hard soft open. It is a it is a character soft opening, <laughs> yeah. But Saturday, all out, all out. We what can't guarantee are, that any of the snacks will be in stock. But the what entertainment gonna, will be. Done. What characters are going to be in the studios? Uh, Goofy will be Santa Goofy in front lot, and then Mini will be uh, Mini Broadway. What the fuck that means? Um, when can we fucking meet? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to swear. When can we meet Pooh <laughs> Bear? In his cute little like jumper. Yes, so that outfit. is during. That <laughs> I is. I want to meet. I want to meet him like that because he's so cute. That is extra magic hours, at Disneyland Park at the boarding house. Oh my God! Shut up! With like who? in his and in, in his in his like in his Christmas yes. outfit from the parade. Uh, in a Christmas outfit. Oh my God! What what a Christmas festive bear! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love her. And up the street, you can meet some festive chipmunks. Oh, oh! I really like their their Halloween outfits. I think it was like a big surprise. The milk. I, like, I, you know what? I felt like it was so. Oh yeah, the so, milk. We haven't oh, talked about I, that. They were nice, but anyway, anyway, I I don't want to make the podcast last another three hours. I know. There's also Lunette at Gaumont. We didn't even we mention have it, just but it's hit, back. We have just hit the two hour mark. I think. Uh, so maybe it's time. It's time to call it a night. It's time to go. Uh, Merry so Christmas, if you're, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yes, exactly. Shine we'll, the light. Uh, I feel like we should have another podcast sometime in December to discuss the Christmas season that started and everything else that's going to happen um, in 2023, uh, which is nothing. Uh, we should do, <laughs> you know what? Our next episode should be a retrospective of like the year at Disney Paris. Oh, good there idea. You go. Oh, we, could go, we could go Good months like not because let's face um, it, 2022 has been an eventful year. There's I mean, been, I mean, I think like month shit month. Month. Like, yeah, it's, it's I, March and I, July. Like, <laughs> no, I feel, yeah, no, I feel like that would be a fun kind of topic to be like, hey, let's look back at what happened at Disneyland Paris this year. Absolutely. Well, it's a date. We don't know when, but it is. Uh, <laughs> Welcome to February's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for being on the show as usual. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to you in December for the year's retrospective. Uh, <laughs> well, now it's, it's, now be, it's the cast it's iron be led by Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing any of the prep for this. So ah, it there happen, you go. It's all of the work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you guys. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.